Okay, I'm going to call the Boards and Commissions Committee meeting to order. Kelly, if you would, please. Mr. Jacobs? Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd move the approval agenda as proposed. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda. And I would make a motion to receive and file Mayor Hart's recommendation of the following appointments. Michelle Weber, Boards and Commissions, Design Review Board, expiration date of 5-7-2020. That's a reappointment. Gwen Berry, Boards and Commissions, the Airport, expiration date 6-30-2021. That's a new appointment. And Dr. Linda Allen, Boards and Commissions, Airport, expiration 6-30-2021. And that's a new appointment. I will second that. Um, is there any discussion, questions, as far as any of this? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Yes. I have one question. A constituent asked me to ask you, uh, number uh, 1C, that person does not live in Waterloo, nor do they live in Blackhawk County. Hmm. Is that um, okay? Yeah, I, I received that email from you and uh, did some checking as far as uh, what the actual rule state for the airport, and if you would, I'll read that Perfect. so that everyone can hear that. Perfect. Okay, it says, uh, for the airport board, shall have the authority to govern the operation of Waterloo Regional Airport and the management and development of adjacent area. The board shall consist of seven members appointed by the mayor with the approval of the city council. Members shall consist of four residents of Waterloo. Two residents may be of Blackhawk County or any county within the state and one may be a resident of the city of Cedar Falls. Members having experience in the areas of aviation, business, accounting, financing, marketing, engineering, law, real estate development, management, and other related fields would be of value to the board. Members shall have staggered four-year terms, and the meetings are the fourth Tuesday of the month, 12 noon, in the airport boardroom. So having read that and, and looked at it, I don't see how there would be any reason not to allow Dr. Allen to be on board. And I responded to Jerry, the person that made that email, and initial email response, and he said that uh, she would be a great asset to the board as well, but he had that question, and so it's okay. been answered, and he agrees with the answer. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, the only question I had was corollary to that, and that was uh, it allows two, and there aren't two already out of county. Uh, Keith, is that correct? Good afternoon, uh, Keith Gaspar, Airport Director. There is not. Uh, she would be the only one of the seven members of the board that would be outside of Blackout County. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. We are in adjournment. Uh, Public Safety Committee meeting to order. Madam Secretary, if you read the roll, please. Mr. Lind? 
Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Motion to approve the agenda, agenda as proposed. Second. We have a motion, a second, and uh, the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We have an agenda. If one of you gentlemen would like to take that item. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we begin the discussions of restrictions of personal uses of fireworks within the city limits. Second. We have a motion and a second on that item, uh, so we will have that discussion. I know I see several people here that have spoken in the past. Um, I don't know how many of you were told that typically at these work sessions, the public comments are not allowed, but I also heard on the radio today that citizens were encouraged to come and share their comments, so we will. Um, I guess what I'd like to ask is if there are folks here that have not spoken in the past, and I see several familiar faces, if we could maybe have them talk first. And then if I could also point out that we do have a limited amount of time today, um, 20 minutes at the most. So if you could keep your comments as brief as possible, that'd be greatly appreciated. So do either one of you two have anything you'd like to share first? Um, let's have public comments first. Okay. All right. Young man, if you'd like to step up there. And we need your name and address, please. Okay. Uh, Robert Fay, uh, 1618 Logan Avenue. And thank you for letting me speak first because I think I have something, an option for people that uh, have skittish dogs around fireworks. It's called canine diazepam, doggy valium. Uh, you can get it from any vet. Uh, the thing is, it's a mild uh, sedative. Uh, it's economical. It's uh, easy, convenient. Most important, it works. I've got a 135-pound Anatolian Shepherd, and just takes takes all the noise away from him. Doesn't hurt him, and so. And the thing is, I just haven't heard this be advertised. <clears throat> like when uh, I first heard of it, I didn't take it up. Uh, didn't go to the vet for fireworks. My dog was scared of thunder to a point of trembling, I, and I had no idea what the if the vet could do anything or what he could do and I went there and explained the situation and and it's just four dogs that are scared with noise and I guess that's all I have to say so thank you thank you we appreciate that and I do want to mention too we did get a copy of uh, I think it was about 44 emails uh, since Sunday and Monday so again if some of you folks or some of those folks that emailed I would appreciate it if you might hold your comments uh, and the article we got, we said approximately 15 of the 44 were in favor of allowing the fireworks, so I'm assuming the other 30 uh, were opposed. And I think there is some degree of full ban versus partial ban versus full five or six weeks or whatever the state allows and something in between. So is there anybody else out there that has not talked? If you'd step up to the microphone, name and address, please. <coughs> Hello. I'm Lisa Brink. I live at 2523 Randolph Street here in Waterloo. And I guess I'm for the fireworks. I think all you need to do is just make sure that the people actually stay within the time frames. And a good way to do that is, you know what, if you're going you're gonna to break the rules, then just up the fines. And I mean really just up the fines. And no warnings. I don't think you should be given a warning if you can figure out how to work a firework. I think you should know, you should be able to figure out when the time frames are cops come up sorry sucks to be you here's your five hundred dollar fine you know sure give them a five a five minute leeway or something but and i think a lot of people they were concerned that the fact that the fireworks were going over into their yard and their houses the problem with that is people didn't know what they had i didn't know what i was doing my first one went right over to the neighbor's house and i said oops sorry um hey let's point this towards the streets I actually enjoyed all the fireworks in our neighborhood. It was fun going outside, and I saw people out walking around going, ooh, ooh, you know, and that one's real pretty, and this one's real nice, and stuff like that. And I, I just think that you just need to maybe get it down to a few days. That Saturday before was nice, and on the 4th of July, it was really nice. And if people are going to break the rules, and they're going to be out there at midnight, it's going to be real easy to spot them, and you just walk up there, and here's your fine, and you give that money to the police department or the city of Waterloo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
My name is Bill Wente. I live at 562 McAllen Lane. Actually, Tom and I had a conversation and an email week, probably almost two weeks ago. Yeah. But um, I'm not necessarily for or against the fireworks, but, <coughs> but as far as uh, <coughs> enforcing it, I know that the police department is stretched thin enough as it is. How are they going to really police it? I don't know what the answer to that is. I just know that this is a sampling of what I found in my yard. Some of these, I have a, I live on an acre and a half in a, in a area that's three sides of it are undeveloped. And some of this had to go 75 yards or more onto my property to the point where I found them. Um, I questioned, uh, didn't confront, but I questioned where I was quite sure because I saw it coming from the yard on the one side of me that is developed, which led to him, led to a screaming, a one-sided screaming match from him. I'll try to keep it very brief, but uh, um, he, uh, he says it's legal. as well, it's not legal to shoot it onto somebody else's property. So it landed on your driveway, big frickin' deal. And I'm quoting him now, only he was screaming at me. And he ended up labeling me as the confrontational neighbor, and he's spreading that to the other neighbors like, you know, I've only lived in this, you know, this house is new a year and a half ago. And now my neighbors, the ones that are established there, are thinking I'm, I'm the bad guy here. So I kinda got put, I'm being put in a bad position. Um, not sure I have anything else to add to it, but uh, just there, you know, this is, you know, it's aggravating. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Next. And maybe, you know, folks, if you want to maybe get in a line there, and then we've got an idea of how many we're going to have because I'm watching the clock, too, and I want to have council input. My name is Julie Johnson. I live at 1651 Cornwall Avenue. The neighbor across the road from me was completely legal in firing off his fireworks on June 30th. However, he did it for four hours straight from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. I call that excessive. I came home expecting to enjoy some peace and quiet after a long week at work. I did not get it. Some of the fireworks were so loud when I was outside, I felt I instinctively ducked for cover. I don't think that is what we need in Waterloo. Um, if we're going to have fireworks, restrict them only to the 4th of July. Otherwise, make it just public fireworks like we've had before. Waterloo has always put on a fantastic show of fireworks. I did not call public safety with about my neighbor because he was completely being legal, just extremely inconsiderate. So I would ask the city council to rest further restrict the use of fireworks on private property. Thank you. Thank you. Sally Preby, 702 Home Park. I would just like to plead with the council not to have fireworks at Christmas. You know, a lot of us go to midnight services and to us it's a holy holiday, peace on earth, goodwill to men. and. I would hate to be sitting in church hearing fireworks go off. And I just think Christmas time, December, it doesn't need to be done. And I think people that have a religious feeling on that might agree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the record, I'm not a resident of Waterloo. However, I did pay for permits to have a fireworks tent in Waterloo. So I am a part of a, being a fireworks vendor, if you will. Um, and I'm here on behalf of the guys that. Name, name and address. Oh, my please. name is Judd Saul, 1801 Donald Drive, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Thank you. Um, we had a tent uh, at the Cadillac Lanes parking lot. Uh, the tent was run by veterans, some veterans with PTSD that were running that tent. Um, each one of the tents uh, with the Iowa Fireworks Company is donating to a local charity. Our charity for the Waterloo tent happens to be the Veterans Transitional Home. And the guys were working this tent, uh, you know, hours and days solely to give back money to the veterans. These are veterans working for veterans. And a lot of the veterans asked me to come speak on their behalf. They didn't really want to be public. And they said they are tired of being used as an excuse to ban fireworks. And they think it's appalling. They fought for our freedoms. And fireworks are legal. And uh, people happily express those freedoms. 
and patriotism by lighting off fireworks. And my personal view is, given that this is the first year it's legal, people did kind of go excessive. I think, you know, we, even as a fireworks guy, I was like, holy cow, these people are kind of going a little crazy on, on fireworks here. But at the same time, I think over the course of time, I think, I think it'll calm down. I think citizens will be respectful of each other. I am in full agreement of upping the fines if they're not within legal bounds. Go after them. But I do not think that fireworks should be restricted because of a few, you know, of, of a few complaints because I'll be honest, where's the number of people to call for people that love fireworks to the city? Because we had thousands of customers happy every day joyous fathers, sons, neighbors, entire neighborhoods would come in and buy fireworks for neighborhood celebrations. And they're very happy to have this freedom. So I'd like to encourage you to be, uh, weigh this decision in. Yes, there's a, there's a loud group that <clears throat> is opposed to them, but there are thousands that do love them and we have the receipts to prove it. I just wanna say thank you and please uh, take this into consideration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Roach. I live at 432 Campbell Avenue in Waterloo. Uh, I know residents of our neighborhood were pretty vocal online anyway with each other. Uh, and again, like most people have said, you know, I don't want to take away people's enjoyment of fireworks. That's just fine. But does it have to be in my neighborhood, all around my house, for five days in a row until 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning? Uh, I think I also have the right to not be subjected to noise pollution for days on end. So I think celebrating the 4th of July is just fine. I think the, the, the amount of time that was allowed was too much. And if we're going to rely on local law enforcement to respond <clears throat> to those that don't abide by the time limit, I think it's too much to ask that they police that for five days. Uh, if, if it's one day, Maybe that's more doable. I don't know. I just know that they're still going off in my neighborhood uh, the other night, 1 o'clock in the morning. And it's not one little firework going off. It's boom, 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 boom. Um, and for me, uh, I don't know about other neighborhoods, but I know in my area, sound echoes in our area. So it's easy to hear loud sounds. I was sitting out on my deck on Saturday night having a family get together. We couldn't hear our conversation because I had fireworks going off all around me I just and I thought I'm a taxpayer here and I don't appreciate this if I want to see fireworks I go somewhere to see them and enjoy them and I think that we can find some alternative way of where people <coughs> can freely use their fireworks and not all over the city of Waterloo thank you for listening thank you do we have a housing meeting at 445 Kelly Okay, all right, thank you. Hi, my name is Brian Mueller. I live at 1801 Sider. And uh, I grew up in the 80s. I was born in 76, and I was always taught, you know, that uh, the red evil commies, you know, they, did, they didn't have freedoms. And this country is great because we have freedoms and everything. And I have a Bosnian neighbor, and a couple of years ago, I was just asking him, nothing against Bosnians. I mean, I don't got any, I'm not racist or anything, but I just asked him, how they celebrated their independence from the czars. And he, he told me that they shoot AK-47s in the air. And I'm not asking to shoot an AR-15 in the air or anything, you know, but I think that, you know, this is America and we should have at least the freedom to celebrate the 4th of July. I mean, you know, our independence when they can shoot off AK-47s, you know, in, in Bosnia, we can't even sh shoot off fire fireworks, you know. In America but it'd be pretty sad it'd be a sad day if we you know you guys take away our freedom for for a little bit of complaining but thank you thank you my name is Cheryl Peters Ramelsburg and I live at 934 West Mullen and I have talked before but I can't stand listening to this I cannot stand it we have had fireworks going off in my neighborhood since June 1st it's not over, like the other lady said. Um, we are not children. We are not children. We do not need to have the right to set those fireworks off and destroy everybody else's peace and quiet and put our animals on tranquilizers. 
just because some idiot wants to do firecrackers so close to your house, you can't, you hear boom, 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 the walls are shaking, the dogs won't go outside, nobody can sleep, and we have to bother the police. And um, I'm one of the people that called several times, <laughs> Dan, I gotta own it. But um, June 1st, June 1st, until it's still going on. And I was very happy to see that the resolution was, was passed that will make it a nuisance complaint. And so these idiots that don't have any intelligence that are taking advantage of our freedom can um, be, be charged for the police department's um, services. I also agree with Sally. I do not want those fireworks going off during the holiday season. I mean, they, they already ruined my 4th of July. I mean, I wouldn't have gone to watch fireworks. You couldn't have paid me enough to go watch fireworks because I was so sick of them. And I'm just shaking, I'm so angry. It's not right to the citizens to have this allowable within the city limits. And I have lived here for 68 years, and this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I will just you know, I let you know I'm angry. And I also counseled a lot of veterans who would not say they didn't get bothered by those firecrackers. So thank you. I'm against it totally. Bang. We'll have one more, and then we'll have council comments. Councilor Mayor, Reverend Loggins, P.O. Box 2112, Waterloo. And actually, I wasn't going to say anything. I just wanted to hear what everyone else had to say. But I hope we would stop and think about a lady just sitting on her porch. I don't want to bore you people, put you to sleep. But a woman sitting on her porch with her family. Fireworks going off. She gets shot. They don't even know where the shot came from because of the fireworks. See, the thing about fireworks is that they sound just like gunfire. And if you don't know the difference, think about that. Sitting on her porch with her family, her kids, and she gets shot. Thank you, Council Mike. Okay, sure, that'd be great. And we, you know, I obviously are not going to get this resolved tonight, but I do want to get Council input, and uh, I think we may need to have another work session before we bring it back to Council for discussion. You know, one of the challenges we had on this for everybody in the state was it was a very short fuse decision and the night we voted on this going back several weeks ago or months ago I asked about what Cedar Falls and Evansdale and the county was doing and part of the problem we have is we were on a short leash we were on like five days they did the five or six weeks and I think some of our problem was their problem spilling over into our town I think the public right or wrong was a little confused about what the rules were and I know Cedar Falls and Evansdale is waiting to see what we're going to do uh not that, that we're the leaders but i think having all of us on the same page evansdale cedar falls the county and waterloo would be the first step in in getting this a little bit more under control and then also having it not be the first year i think there was a lot of it has been mentioned a lot of uh, overreaction to that because you haven't been able to do it for eight years but councilman lind or uh, amos either one? Uh, mr chairman yes, um we've run out of time so we're going to have to um have another work session I would think yes because this committee needs to discuss I I'm I'm in favor of a major restrictions or an outright ban that's what I'm in favor of um, I, I, and, and and I have several um, ideas I want to present to the committee to for the staff to consider to maybe develop an ordinance right. um, it's probably Kelly am I correct it's probably with this minor discussion there's you can't even start writing ordinance yet because you don't even know what we want um, the biggest thing at this point is we'll just need direction from the public safety committee on do you want to ban and if and if you don't want to ban um, and you want to allow usage the dates and times that the usage would be allowed and that'll enable 
the police department, whether it's a ban or restrictions to write tickets based on well could you that. could you s do a draft and incl and have a ban and then have a limited use to write and then fill in the blanks for the times and the dates or something like that could I think it would be easier because then I'd have to write two different ordinances I think it'd be better to have that direction from public safety committee because it's public a major public safety concern sure and then based off of your guys's comments and some things that you want to see um, then we go to ordinance committee and kind of discuss that because that'll include all of council kind of whittling it down further from there yeah. yeah. I just want I just want to make a comment that um, you know we we kind of went overboard and provided too long of a time to to shoot fireworks and there seemed to be no sense of decency or common courtesy for many of our citizens and they're the ones that ruined it for the law-abiding citizens who want to enjoy fireworks as a result we're gonna have to make some serious changes to uh, use of fireworks in the city of Waterloo in my opinion Mr. <coughs> Mr. Chairman I um, have had a a lot of different conversations with individuals. I've actually been polling people to find out what their thought process is as far as the fireworks. And I'm getting all the way from, yeah, ban them completely to individuals. And these some of these people are veterans who actually, you know, they say they want fireworks. They don't want them banned. I've, I've talked to a person who has PTSD who actually shot off fireworks. But after a three-day period, then he had to start going down in his basement and doing things so myself personally looking at the perspective the broad perspective of all of the citizens i feel like if we do a total and complete ban because of what's going on citizens are out there shooting them off right now still if we do that we're going to be setting citizens up for fines there's no doubt about it mm -hmm. and granted if they go that route so be it but for me talking with all of these other individuals i'm i'm not in my mind right now able to support a total ban but yes I feel that maybe we do need to look at shortening up that window thank you Mr. Hey, Chairman council members yes sir yes uh, uh, last Thursday uh, had a ward meeting ward 3 meeting and uh, from that some decisions the group made some decisions uh, by uh, um, some pretty verbal comments and uh, some votes that they took and uh, from from this meeting they decided the following by majority vote First of all, fireworks should be permitted for use in the city of Waterloo from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. on July 4th. And other than that, fireworks usage in the city of Waterloo should be banned. Uh, the third thing is that sale of fireworks is restricted to only industrial park areas of the city of Waterloo. Uh, fourth thing, to use fireworks in the city of Waterloo, a person must be 18, not over the legal limit of intoxication, be at least 200 yards from <coughs> hospitals and senior facilities, be on a person's own property, pick up debris made by fireworks usage, not direct usage at an angle or towards others' real property, including public property. The fifth thing was anywhere fireworks are sold, that vendor must alert all buyers, both in print and verbally, of the restrictions on use within the city of Waterloo, and finally, that the city council and mayor send a letter to the state legislatures and the governor demanding to either rescind the fireworks law as passed and signed this year or set a statewide time for usage as exemplified by number one above. And that was what they decided on. Thank you. Anything else? And I'll give a copy of that to Kelly. Councilman. I'll make copies for everybody too. Comments? Councilman Smith, I. You know, I've had a lot of calls and I've talked to a lot of people this week and um, it, you know it, I hear the folks that want to celebrate the fourth and I do as well but you know this the fireworks really are in, in position on folks who just want to enjoy the fourth as it is they're, they're obnoxiously loud uh, which I feel they violate our noise and litter ordinances uh, you, you know if you have a two-foot bottle rocket and you go to shoot that off do you really think that you're going to go find where that lands and pick it up so you're intentionally littering on somebody else's yard in this city so we have we have a litter you know i went out and cleaned them off my roof this last week 
So we have the problem of litter um, and animals um, either eating the fireworks or just being disturbed uh, by them. And I think that was probably the biggest complaint we had were the animals. Um, and I think that's, a, that's, that's quite an issue that we have um, because the animals have no control. There's not much they can do but go and hide, and that's what most of them did out there. So uh, I think it's a real concern. Um, you know, I, I could see somewhere outside the city limits to shoot those off. Um, if we're going to establish a bunch of rules, then we're going to have a police force to enforce those rules. So maybe since the state wants to make all this tax money on the sale of these fireworks, maybe they ought to provide additional police force to go ahead and police all these fireworks um, in our city. So, and obviously they're not going to do that. So with that said, we don't really have the funds to go out and police. If we make a bunch of rules, those are going to be very hard to enforce. We could not, we, we had a hard time, as I understand, following up on the calls that we did take, over 750 calls um, plus. And so it just creates a, a strain on our police force. It litters on our properties. It, it, messes, it, it really uh, is unfair to the animals. And for us, I just want to have some peace and quiet. It's uh, you're in, imposing on my peace and quiet. I couldn't go out there and squeal my tires in my car without someone saying something or turn loud music up in my house. Uh, you, would, you would probably knock on my door and say, turn down your music. Um, and so this is actually worse than that, if you keep that in perspective, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Tom, you got it. Uh, I actually have a few comments, but I, I guess I would, at this point, just like to continue the conversation right. because I think it is a burden on many of our citizens because of many other citizens not being cognizant of what's going on around them. And then I would ask if we could the fire chief to research because I do believe that in the legislation that passed, the state fire marshal was supposed to allocate some dollars for education. And if we have that opportunity to scoop up some of that money and, and then also work with the providers of uh, fireworks to, to message much like what somebody else had already mentioned that to get some control on them and also to limit the time. I think we tried, didn't work. So now we have to figure out a solution to allow those uh, either on New Year's Eve or maybe the 4th of July. That's the only comments right now. But I look forward to the continued conversation. I want to be a part of that. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I think setting uh, dates and time is absolutely a waste of time because as one lady said, they've been going off since June 1st, and I, I heard them as of, as of today. Um, Any time that you want to kill something, you need to take away the supply, and we're not alone on this. Uh, other cities are having the same problem we are. I would like to see a, a possibly a coalition of the mayors of, of our major cities to meet with the governor and how we can reverse this decision because as long as they're going to sell fireworks, people are going to light them off. So I don't care what you do as far as putting dates and times, it's, it's not going to work. And I don't want to put the burden in our police department try to enforce this when hundreds of people are firing them off at all hours of the day and night. Um, this sounded like a good decision at first, but it's gone wrong. Uh, we've been able to celebrate the 4th of July for many, many years without fireworks, and I, I think we can go back to that. So I'm not in favor of setting any kind of times for fireworks. Well, I do want to say again, just to, to reaffirm, we, we were the most restrictive of all the communities in the area, so, you know, good for us, but it still didn't solve the issues. Uh, Kelly, could we look at like uh, Monday the 21st of August, uh, maybe plug that in and see how that looks to have another work session and maybe if we could, I would say allow more time. But then that way between now and then and chief and chief, I don't know if you've had conversations with Cedar Falls and Evansdale and the county, but I think that's critical too that we all get on somewhat the same page. So right. if we could get that all done. Another work session or another public safety committee meeting? I'm sorry, another public safety okay. meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So maybe Monday the 21st. Okay. Okay, okay folks. Thank you all for coming who came for this. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meetings, but uh, keep the 21st of August in mind. I'm sure the Courier and KXCL and KWL will do a nice job of covering it. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion to second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.
So order, Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move the approval of the agenda and approval of the minutes from July 10th, 2017, as proposed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the agenda and minutes. Questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign, that motion passes. Somebody would take the first five items under new business. Mr. Chairman, I would take uh, travel requests. Keith Gasperi, <laughs> Director of Aviation, to attend a class, which is the four state airport conference, former FAA Central Region Conference, destination Kansas City, Missouri. Dates August 28th through the 30th of 2017. The amount not to exceed $800. Officer Words class, precision driving instructor certification destination is Des Moines. Dates July 31st through August 4th. The amount not to exceed $897.65. Lieutenant Ferguson, Fire Marshal, this is a revised request. <coughs> to attend a class in Illinois, Iowa, IAAI training conference which is the International Association of Arson Investigators. The destination is in Champaign, Illinois, <coughs> dates September 27th, excuse me, 24th through the 27th. The amount not to exceed $833. <coughs> Number four is the permission uh, to dispose of four fire department vehicles. And number five, permission to auction <coughs> old and unused public works vehicles Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the first five items. Any discussion or questions on those? No. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Six through. Mr. Six. Chairman, uh, pre authorizations to expend over $1,000. <coughs> Engineering, $1,681.05 for Dakari Light Mobile License Subscription Renewal and Cardi Light Mobile E Connect Subscription Renewal. Engineering, $22,455 spraying trees and they rip wrap in various reaches along the flood control system. Housing Authority, $500 for the Ridgeway Towers resident meetings. Leisure Services, $1,372.21 for the sound system for the field house for classes and special events. Leisure Services, $1,575. Use soccer shirts and second session of T-ball and A-ball. And police, uh, $1,350 plus $50 shipping and handling to install additional security camera in the property evidence building. Police, $17,592.50. Annual software licenses, upgrading and support for Wiley Police Department computers. Sewer Department, $1,600 dollars and 30 cents plus 850 dollars shipping and handling emergency rental of an eight foot by eight foot by six foot aluminum trench showing box with two foot extendable legs in traffic operations five thousand five hundred dollars payment marking removal on park avenue including mobilization and traffic control second okay we have a motion a second on all the pre -offs. any questions on any of those items hearing none old favor say aye I oppose same sign those motion pad. We have six budget line item amendments which are on file at the city clerk's office and the bills payment this week $797,070.21. That's 797,070.21. Second. Do you have any questions in regards to the budget line amendment? Michelle, I do on number seven. Um, aren't these grants usually a 50-50 match? Not always. Michelle Wiedner, Chief Financial Officer. This one is not 50-50 match. Um, the cost, I think Eric could speak to that. The cost for the canopy repairs came in a little more. And so gaming had committed 750000 and so we have to pick up a little bit more to get the difference. I see. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if we could have an explanation of why the costs are increased. I didn't catch that. If we could have an explanation from Eric on oh. the increase on the bridge costs. Sure. Eric? 
Very close. Did you remember the decision was made to add the alternate in to replace the windows? That's what increased it. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Bills are paid. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Get ready for a wacky night tonight. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everyone to this 
uh, council meeting this evening. Uh, sorry for the couple minutes delay, but Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lind? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. All right, we have a full council this evening. Um, now you can stand or you can sit, but if you would please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Um, this evening, uh, we, we do have a special guest. She, she doesn't like the attention. But um, uh, Ms. Kelly Sullivan, could you please come up to the podium, please? Um, the person that was going to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance was unable to make it this evening. And uh, what better honor than we would have to have uh, Kelly Sullivan this evening lead us in the pledge. So. Thank you for this honor, Mayor. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kind of put her on the spot. But. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Welker, I'd Welker. like to make a motion to approve the agenda as proposed and also the minutes of July 10th, 2017 regular session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We have an agenda today. Uh, first up on our agenda right now are some recognition. So I would like to first uh, call up. Um, uh, Mark Lane right now. So Mark, would you please come front and center? <coughs> and Mark quickly asked me, uh, when is this placed on the agenda? <laughs> Not like we won't be here that long tonight, but Mark, if you stand over here with me. But um, this is a, a, a wonderful honor. Um, one of the things we try to do is to acknowledge the dedication and support of um, people that work within the city, that work hard every day, work selfless every day to make Waterloo such a great place. And this evening, we have the opportunity to celebrate with Mark uh, 30 years of dedicated service and also five years as a temp before he started off with the city of Waterloo and the plaque reads presented to Mark Lane in appreciation of 30 years of valuable and dedicated service to the city of Waterloo, Iowa, July 5th, 2017. So before we give him a round of applause, Mark, you want to share some, some thoughts with us? How, how great it is to work with the mayor and <laughs> <laughs> you work with a few of them. So, but, uh, you know, Mark, Mark does his job, um, not any for the glory, um, but he does a great job every day. So we're thankful uh, for his efforts. And if you would please join me in honoring Mark with a round of applause. And now we have uh, Mr. John Martin, if you would please come up and uh, join us as well. And a program that was started probably about six, seven uh, years ago uh, was another employee program, and it's called Team Member of the Month. And it's where we have um, members within the city of Waterloo that have gone above and beyond the call of duty uh, been exemplary in their performance and their job responsibilities. And so this week, um, today I had the honor to go to uh, uh, John's department. I didn't tell him what I was there for and I looked very uh, upset. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, just some of the things that were, if you have the, um, have the information, uh, I just want to read a little bit about what 
um, John's staff uh, and co-workers said that uh, accept a personal appreciation and congratulation for being named July's team member of the month. You have distinguished yourself by providing service and performance above and beyond what is normally expected in the day-to-day -day performance of your job duties. You demonstrate a can-do attitude, and the Community Development Department is closing out its down payment assistance program with deadlines fast approaching. But you have maintained a positive attitude in regards to inspections that needed to be done before those deadlines. Your mindset is we are here for the client and we need to help. You have done an excellent you, you have excellent client skills and go out of your way to make sure Waterloo's rehab program is a success and you do a Mr. Incredible job. So uh, John will be recognized in several areas across the city on our cable access and within City Hall, uh, within our newsletter. But this is just a great way for us to thank those that work for the city, uh, to let them know we appreciate it and we thank them for the example that he sets, not just for his co-workers, but the entire city and for also myself as well. So, John, thank you so much for all you do for the city. John didn't even want to make eye contact. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have those two recognitions out of the way. Um, so now this is time for oral presentations. It's your opportunity to address the city council uh, with concerns of your heart. Uh, you can address the council with one item and also uh, it cannot be an item that is currently placed on the agenda because you will have your opportunity to participate uh, on that item coming up in the agenda. So would you please state your name uh, and your address and let us know what you're thinking. Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. Uh, Mayor, I got a concern about, uh, I don't know if it's on the agenda tonight or not, about the red light cameras. I was riding around Waterloo the other day and uh, I got a problem with them. I think some of our lights, street lights, are going to have to be changed or coordinated a little bit better. Because when you hit them and they're green and all of a sudden they're yellow, do you stop? Do you stop in the middle of the intersection? Do you hey, go Jeff, you want to wait, to, Mr. Chapman? You want to wait to? Uh, I think it's uh, 16. Sure, sure. Right. Well, Thank I got a, I got another question, though, Mayor. That How much? Lie, did, I'll take another one. Okay, well, you take Mr. Dryer's all the time, so I thought you'd take mine. So, I know, but, but we're, we're, we're about to follow our <laughs> a little bit better. But I was just wondering how much it costs the taxpayers and uh, the city of Waterloo and the police department and the fire department for all the fireworks calls they went on. I get a list of all of them, and I'll tell you. I think it was about 760-ish calls, and uh, is it, uh, Chief, roughly about $9? Just for dispatch. Just for dispatch. I, I think it's more than 700 and some now. I think they're still going on, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But that was the last count. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, the council. Name is Dr. Kenneth Adderley, uh, Commissioner with the Waterloo Human Rights Commission. And, um, I noticed from item 16, uh, it discusses uh, rerouting of traffic and perhaps as the news is out in the streets, um, Dr. camera Rack state of Dr. surveillance. Um, the, the oral presentations um, are non-agenda related items. Yes. So as I asked Mr. Uh, yes. Chapman to come back, number 16, I'm That is sure. why I'm here. Not, I'm only on a related item, Mr. Mayor. Okay. The related item is when is there an initiative based on your uh, stated racial and social justice impact uh, to consider policing. There is no, I hold in my hand, a green paper that possibly would be submitted to this council for consideration as white paper discussion. But uh, over the last 20 years, having been in this city that long, um, we have always had a problem with policemen of ethnic background. And perhaps it should be considered 
And if not, that is the concern that I bring as a member of the Commission, because we hear it every day, and perhaps it's a solution that time to be considered. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. This is unrelated to what is on the agenda. Uh, I have asked by email and at other meetings, how many years have we been bonding $700,000 for the maintenance and $250,000 for hotel motel tax for the operation of the Five Sullivan Brothers Center? That is related and we will address that in our presentation a little you bit will. later. You will? Well, that's good. I've asked for several weeks now. Mr. Well, you Dreyer. Demand, you demand it. Um, we have a lot of things going on. So sometimes when you call and ask a question about something, you may not be able to get it that day like you've been asking for a day or two later. So uh, staff is busy sometimes and we may not be able to respond at that second in which you've been asking and demanding us to do. I understand that, Mr. Mayor. I've asked three weeks in a row at a meeting and I emailed two different people. We are having a presentation about that. And, I, and I, re I received his email request last week, I think Wednesday or Thursday, and I did respond today. And I, I apologize, I meant to respond on Saturday, and I didn't get that done with everything else I was working on. So you should have a response now. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Let us know what's on your heart and your mind. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Todd Obadal, 124 Amity Drive. Um, I'm just here to uh, discuss just a little bit about civics in our city here. Um, so look about up what? at about civics. Civics. Okay. And uh, just make a note that uh, everyone up here is here because of the law of Iowa. That through the process, an election process, a procedure was followed, and now you have power to make decisions on behalf of the city of Waterloo. Along with that uh, acceptance of that power from the law also means a submission to the law and a respect for the law. I'm just going to cite one, one section of code and then I will be done. Section 364.7. A city may not dispose of an interest in real property by sale, lease, or for a term of more than three years or gifted except when council sets forth this in a proposal and a resolution and shall publish such notice as provided in section 3623 and that provides for a minimum of a four-day notice that's all I have thank you it's a lot of people we only have three or four comments all right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. There's a couple things that I wanted to uh, bring up, if that's uh, okay by you and the council. Um, I prepared these and have a copy to give to uh, Kelly, both of them. Um, first of all, Mr. Mayor, council, and, and everybody, uh, during the last budget process, the council approved a budget that although I voted against I still accept as it is our City of Waterloo budget, which I am part of and am to work within. One of the results of this recently passed and now in effect budget is affecting the quality of life component of our great city, the library. Due to the city's budget cuts affecting the library's operations, patrons of the library are about to see library hours of op operation be reduced. Rather than being open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday, those hours will change from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on both days, a reduction of three hours per day or a total of six <coughs> hours. The library staff and the library board believe that there is no choice but to reduce hours given the library's already bare bones, staffing levels, and the need to properly staff so as to remain open, safe, and providing service. Whom and what does this affect? Short answer, everyone, but especially students, daytime workers, nighttime programs, and events, and those that rely on the library for their updates, current community information, 
information gathering and contacts. It also has moved us closer uh, to 63 hours to that minimum hours required for accreditation, which is 61. Please, I ask all of you, when we can restore and then enhance this quality of life treasure that we, the people of Waterloo, have had, do have, and need to maintain. And secondly, um, Mr. Mayor, Council, and everybody, an issue that continuously is raised concerns enforcement of our city codes. It is repeatedly used in connection with public safety, quality of life, and our city's image. Public safety is not just police and fire, but also includes public health, building inspections, plumbing, sanitation, and code enforcement. All on the council are fully aware of the calls that we receive that are passed on to the code enforcement office, but are you aware that since January 1st of this year, there have been over 2,000 complaints from the public and 5,793 complaints and reinspections that have been handled by code enforcement. Our city of Waterloo currently has a staff of full four timers, one form, foreman who is Maria, two officers, Cameron and Sue, and one receptionist, secretary and clerk, who's Emily, and one part-time officer, Tim. Maria, Sue, and Cameron each handle a third of Waterloo, Waterloo being 60, about 63 square miles, or each of them handle about 21 square miles, with Maria as the foreman having to deal with administrative supervisory issues as well. Tim handles stolen, recovered bikes, abandoned properties, and so forth. All deal with not only the complaint intakes and contacts, but also the follow-up, paperwork, court work, court appearances, and other necessary parts of jobs as assigned. Complaints come in constantly and sometimes in droves. The inability to handle every complaint on demand should be apparent when staffing levels are so inadequate. These are not fluff jobs and they need to be considered an intrinsic part of fulfilling the duty to enforce the codes that the city has established. Code enforcement needs at a minimum one more full-time officer and I would suggest two with an officer assigned to each of the current five wards within our great city. Mr. Mayor, Council and all, I hope that this will be kept in mind when Budget 29 approaches. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Uh, this is also time for Council updates. We just got Mr. Morrissey's. Uh, council, what's going on in your lives? Uh, if you want to um, let the public know, uh, want to give some update that's shaking in your ward or something you've been involved in? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey. Well, I still have some other things, although I know Mr. Welper would prefer that. Never mind, Ron. <laughs> um, one of the things that's happened uh, since the last time we uh, had this was I had my 30, 43rd ward meeting last Thursday, July 13th, and uh, uh, it was a great meeting, and there was a lot of, of interest and a lot of fireworks going on during the meeting, to say the least. Uh, but what's going on in Ward 3 besides that is the following. We've got the Park to Park Complete Street uh, that's being uh, uh, put in place uh, as we talk. We've got Grand Crossing. We've got Hawkeye Community College Metro Campus. We've got the Sportsplex Crosswalk, Crosswalk, which hopefully will be up by fall time. We've got Deck Hockey high-rise at the liver loop, river loop walkway that's going up. We've got Highway 63 improvements, Logan Plaza improvements. We've got Quiet Zones a field study that's going to take place in August, uh, if anybody's been keeping up with that. We have a Greenbrier meeting that's going to take place with some Greenbrier residents, myself and Mike Gannon from uh, the uh, geological uh, group out of Iowa City. Uh, we got uh, the convention center and hotel uh, that is uh, going to be one of those things that we're going to be addressing tonight. And we also have uh, single speed going uh, with uh, a lot of force behind it and a lot of activity down around there. Plus, we've got a new business going in next to Basil Pizza called Tebow, which will be also run by Tony Eyscheid. So very proud of what's going on in, in War Three. Anything else before we move on? 
Second to make a motion, receive and file oral comments. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welker. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, that's items 1A one through one A through B5. And within that are the bills payment this week, $797,070.21. That's 797,070.21. Second. Second. The motion has been made with a second. Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. Items 1A, 2, and 5, I would request that we have work sessions before the public meetings, hearings, where we would take action so we know in detail what's going on in those two projects. <coughs> Maybe we could some avoid some confusion. And also, uh, 1B3 in the appointments, I had a call today from a constituent who has applied for the airport board three consecutive times, yet he never gets appointed to the airport board. And I'm just wondering what recourse does he have or who should he talk to or how does he get appointed to the airport board? He's a pilot. He's very qualified. He would be a fantastic commissioner. Can you um, uh, tomorrow or something give me a call to shoot me an email with the name? I will. And then uh, with regards to who, what, what was those numbers? One, one A. Two, two and five. Right here. And five. So at one eight two, you want you want us to to. If we had a work session, we'd get you an update of what this what this is all about. About curbside recycling. Well, it's. Uh, uh, the processing facility. I didn't know we were going to build a processing facility. I just like some information on those two items. Okay. So to do a work session prior to same day. All right. We'll get it done. Um, that's August seventh. So we have two weeks, two or three weeks in between there. Mm -hmm. And then at July 27th, we'll get some. Yeah, All right. we'll get it scheduled. We'll get it taken care of. Thank you. Any other questions? Madam Clerk? <clears throat> Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right, thank you. Those items carry. Um, I would also like to make note, I think I see Dr. Linda Allen in the audience today, could you stand? And then Dr. Gwen Berry, could you stand as well? Um, you said not doctor? Not doctor. Oops, not yet. <laughs> um, uh, these two are appointments for the airport board, um, very ingrained in the community. Dr. Allen is the president at Hawkeye Community College. Um, um, uh, Ms. Berry is the Vice President, Chief Diversity Officer at the University of Northern Iowa with um, roots deeply in this community as well. So we thank you for your commitment, for your dedication, and for your sacrifice for serving on our airport board. So thank you very much. Uh, you are more than welcome to stay. Um, I would if I was you. <laughs> See, I came eight years, ten years ago, and I stayed since now. Um, with, is Michelle Weber? It's not in the audience, right? Uh, who was also a uh, uh, reappointment for for the design review board as well. So hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything else. All right, uh, let's get this council meeting continuing. So someone please take number two under public hearings. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing. And that's for the fiscal year 2018 Ash Street Drainage Improvements, contract number 936. Second. second. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now open. Uh, is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. 
And Madam Clerk, were there any comments on file? There are no comments on file. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Council, questions? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Madam carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to end receive and file and instruct the city clerk to read bids and refer bids to city engineer for review. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, and while the <coughs> clerk is getting ready to read the bids, I know Councilman Amos will probably yes. be happy at this situation. Um, continuing uh, challenges with water and ice in that particular area, so it's taken a, a little while to get to this point. And I uh, see some of the residents in the back who anxiously let us know when there were challenges. So uh, looking forward to this. Madam Clerk. Our, in our engineer's estimate was $53,859.40. Our first bidder was Veith Construction Corporation. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $51,739.28. The second bidder was, was Lodge Construction. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $39,792.70. The next bid came from Hearst & Sons Contractors. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $54,143.43. And our final bid came from Peters & Contractors. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $56,871.40. All right, thank you very much. All right, number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the fiscal year 2018 manhole inspection, service areas 10, 11, 12, 13, contract number 935. Second. Okay. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Please come forward, state your name and your address for the record. <clears throat> I am Forrest Dillavu, 1725 Huntington Road. I wonder if this action is taking place after it has already started. In my part of Waterloo, on Garden Avenue and Blackhawk Road, there are manholes being repaired as we speak. They've got a new piece of equipment, very nice looking piece of equipment, goes out cuts out around it and then it's and then it's repaired so we are already repairing was this done without inspection or are we running ahead of the game thank you all right all right uh, good question um, it's not please? the same uh, let, him, let him at least address it uh, the project that, that you're seeing the work done uh, is all part of the current CIPP program this is the next phase of that that we have to do to to be in compliance with uh, the conditions set forth in the consent decree. So this is the next phase of that, which are, I think it's like 890 something, 76 some of manholes that are required to be inspected. So this is a, a next phase of that that needs to be done. So the answer is question, these are not the same. These are this not the same. This is part of an existing project underway. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. Yeah, in regards to this last statement that was made, we have one on Blackhawk Road that was broken uh, a month or two ago, three months ago, temporarily repaired and fixed, and that's the one that they cut the big round hole out of. So evidently we're not getting some sort of organization and spending a lot of money. It may be not necessary. That was broken uh, because the truck ran over it or something. There was one down on, on Robin Road too. So... I don't know. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Are there any comments on file? 
There are no comments on file. Going a second time. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. All right, that carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. All right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to receive file and instruct city clerk to read bids. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bids. Our engineer's estimate was $48,500. The first bid came from Red Zone Robotics Incorporated of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $43,800. Second bidder was Fairgram Engineering of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They provided security in the form of a check for $5,567.50. Their bid amount was $113,350. The next bidder came from Dependable Maintenance of Clinton, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $30,660. The next bid came from Save Our Sewers Incorporated of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $115,138. The final bid came from Lodge Construction of Clarksville, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $153,300. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving award of contract to the dependable drain and plumbing, dependable maintenance systems of Clinton, Iowa, <coughs> in the amount of $30,660, and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the fiscal year 2018 manhole inspection service areas 10, 11, 12, 13, contract number 935, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. A question I had um, was um, how, I, I mean, and I'm accepting the 30000 I'm not um, arguing against that. I'm just saying how can there be such a discrepancy? I mean, we have one bid 30000 we got another one 153000 I mean, that's $123,000 difference. Uh, you, reviewed, that? Um, you review the, the yes. Could you talk about that, please? Sorry, I didn't introduce myself last time. Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services Director. Uh, this form of contract was actually reviewed by AECOM, but uh, I looked at the information as well, and I, I think some of the other companies that bid real high didn't really understand the level of inspection that we were looking for for this project, and therefore I think the difference. Uh, dependable to somebody that's been doing the work here was very familiar with what we've been doing, and I think that's how, and they're already on site doing some of the other inspections on the other projects. So I think that in part's why the much lower bid. Okay, thank you. Uh, and AECOM will keep a close eye on this project to make Correct. sure we get done what we need to have. Right. All right, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Thank you. Number four, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the sale and conveyance of certain tracts of land, formerly portions of West San Martin Drive right of way located adjacent to Sunnyside Country Club. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any objections on file? There are no comments on file, and there were also no bids received. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on this particular item? Please step up, state your name, and let us know what you're thinking. David Dreyer, you didn't ask for my address, so you don't get it this time. Well, you don't speak. 
so I don't speak. You don't. Roof, need, roof. We, need, we need your address. Thirty-one forty-five West Fourth Street. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I shouldn't. I <laughs> looked up Section three hundred six point two three, and the preference statement in there indicates agency in charge. We aren't. We don't hold the deed. The second part of that was notice, indicates agency, and the definition of the agency is the governing body. The third part of that was preference of sale indicates a public purpose. No deed, no sale. We don't hold the deed. They do at Sunnyside South LLC. Thank you. Right, thank you. All right, any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed pursuant to Iowa Code 306.23. Second. The motion has been made with a second. Council, any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I would still like to get the um, appraisals. I asked for them last week and they must have forgot. A um, couple of the tracks are landlocked and I kind of question why they're such, such high amounts. But that being said, my recommendation would be if we're going to proceed per the code, it, it's if we follow the code to this point, we're able now to sell it as we wish. One thing the state of Iowa used to always do at this point was to assemble the four tracks, assemble the tracks, in this case four tracks, into one parcel, appraise it, offer it for public sale for 30 days, and see if you got any bids. We don't have to do that, but that may give a little more transparency to the process. Just a recommendation. So you said uh, you got that? Mm -hmm. And then you asked for an appraisal. I wasn't no one's going to send me the four appraisals. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor, could we have Noel or somebody tell us what is the plan, if there is one? The plan, the plan. <laughs> No, Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. <coughs> I think uh, Councilman. I think Councilman Lynn put a very good uh, note in uh, what he just talked about. Uh, we are now uh, able to sell it as the city policy says, and we should definitely uh, explore our options as to how we want to move ahead with that. We'll be putting together some uh, ideas on how to move ahead now that no bids are received according to the sale of, of uh, city property policy. Thank you. Jim Walsh. Uh, uh, one of the uh, participants in the plan that we've been waiting we three or four address. years now to build houses. We need an address. Uh, 315 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, uh, JSA Development and Sunnyside South and some other entities, all of which would like to build in Waterloo if we can. Uh, the uh, property that we've got uh, an interest in, we've done what we said we would do under the agreement with the city and are ready to move ahead whenever this city can deliver title and uh, appreciate the steps you've taken in trying to get the title clear and understand the frustration. Uh, we could have had quite a few homes built on that property by now. Thank you. Unless you got questions, we're... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, Council? Uh, Madam Clerk? <coughs> Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right. And he just has to read about the no bids portion. Yeah, I just already read. stated that there Okay. That was there were no bids received. All right, all right. Thank you. All right. So uh, we are at number five. Uh, 
Mr. Welker? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion to receive and file proof of publication of the notice of the public hearing. That's for the sale and conveyance of city-owned property located at 200 West 4th Street Convention Center for $1 to LK Waterloo, LLC. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Um, before we um, um, grab some uh, public input, I want to make a brief presentation. Uh, we've been asked several questions over the last couple weeks. Um, so for those that are just now looking into the situation or seeing it in the newspapers, um, we want to kind of walk you through about what's taking place. And so we've created a PowerPoint presentation, the first part of the presentation. Uh, I promise not to take longer than Mr. Morrissey did a little bit earlier. <laughs> <laughs> The second part of the presentation, I'm going to ask um, uh, Leslie Hospitality representatives to come up and uh, make a presentation. The third part, I'll ask for Noel to come up and walk us through some of the pieces of the development agreement, which we've been asked about uh, a couple times. And I think we may have some guests that would like to speak um, at that point as well. But. Um, when, you, when we take a look overall at, at this particular uh, project, the convention center, I think in, um, somebody wants to hit the slide. Boy, that's some little font. Um, we have, uh, I think in 2013, uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, and, and other folks have worked with a, for a review and evaluation by uh, the Radcliffe Company with regards to the convention center. And in 2016, uh, myself and the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance had formed a task force um, last fall to kind of see what we can do to make some improvements to the convention center, how we could um, deal with some of the challenges, but also hold the line on raising taxes to be able to do so as well. As we know, um, our convention center is 42 years old and uh, I would say in some parts of it, it is, uh, it is somewhat in despair. Um, we have received over the course since I've been in office um, uh, comments about customer service or poor customer service when people actually attend uh, the convention center. And that goes without saying with regards to the 228 room hotel, uh, 10 stories, which uh, absolutely has a poor reputation uh, within the city of Waterloo and also within surrounding communities as well. So in order to address some of those problems, uh, we have um, Mr. Mark Bozen has began the processes for all of our city buildings to put together uh, some type of audit to see exactly where we're at. But with our convention center, uh, we had taken a look at a five-year capital improvements program uh, to take a look at uh, bond monies that we could utilize to be able to fix up the place. And over the course of the next five years um, with that process, and we have to approve it one year at a time for our bonding, roughly at $700,000 a year, but uh, five years at $3.5 million uh, for our improvement. As I mentioned, we can only bond about $700,000 a year uh, for public infrastructure via state code, um, which means we're not able to keep up right now. Um, and if we did change that to have some type of tax increase or levy increase, we'd have to go through a public referendum uh, for raising taxes to be able to uh, deal with our convention center. Uh, the city has borrowed uh, 4.2 million, about 264,000 uh, on average per year since 2000 to make improvements to the center and paying off that debt with interest using property taxes and $700,000 in hotel motel tax funds. Uh, the convention center as a city building now pays absolutely no property taxes while the Ramada is paying $59,000 uh, this year due to its poor conditions. Um, we spend about $195,000 per year on maintenance using hotel, motel, and tax dollars. Um, as you can see right now from the PowerPoint presentation, 
uh, most floor drains and sinks within uh, and, I, and I'm just going to be honest this I, I'm, I'm embarrassed by some of this just to be completely honest um, floor drains and sinks aren't working properly crumbling exterior that you see when you go um, outdated design on the exterior uh, the landscaping is in poor condition and needs maintenance um, the bathrooms are outdated they need additional work um, for uh, conventions and they're not well maintained or cleaned um, dividers aren't working properly and sound is escaping from one area to the other so uh, that hasn't been maintained as well uh, serving pieces uh, currently you being used uh, with guests as you can see um, are, are not in the best condition as well uh, the ice machines, the very ice machines that we have um, aren't functioning the way that they need to be. Exhibition hall, um, uh, paints chipping off the ceiling, uh, chips on floors, uh, and this is even after hours of sweeping. And uh, repairs are needed to ceiling tiles and uh, there's so many other uh, maintenance needs that we have right now to even name tiles and flooring are outdated old and the hotel portion of it is outdated and needs to be updated uh, with so many different amenities and and furniture and just an entirely new vision and look and feel uh, to our to our hotel these are some of the comments we we've, we've been collecting comments um, over the course of the last 18 months that I've been there and I can't tell you how many dear John letters that I've written to people that want to bring business to this uh, convention center but if you can go back I want to read that the convention center is ideal for a group our size and we would like to continue to host the event in Waterloo but if improvements aren't made I'm afraid we may have to take our business elsewhere Another comment, parts of the exhibit hall ceiling fell into an attendee's dinner plate. Escalators quit working. On the final day of the event, the downstairs restroom were dirty and out of toilet paper. The bar was closed without announcement two hours before the end of the event. And so no one could even purchase soda or water. And so these are just a small look at the many things that are taking place um, at our convention center and we've been working extremely hard we've brought uh, business people together as I mentioned a little bit earlier to see what we can do to try to improve the condition and raise revenues so that we can put our convention center in the place that it needs to be so to talk about the convention center now and where the vision that the company has for the convention center I'd like to call up um, uh, I think Mr. Monahan or Mr. Le Ms. Maloney that's what I said <laughs> 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 to talk about um, the current and new vision potential for the convention center members of council Mr. Mayor ladies and gentlemen some of my friends call me Mr. Monahan, but other <laughs> others call me John Maloney. Um, I am the marketing voice for Leslie Hospitality. Hey, John, where are you out of? I am based out of Dallas, Texas. Leslie Hospitality is based out of Omaha, Nebraska. I am not an employee of Leslie Hospitality. I am a partner of Leslie Hospitality. Okay. Um, I own a small marketing and advertising agency that specializes in destination marketing. So, the pictures you just saw of your convention center, welcome to our world. This is the world we live in every day. Leslie Hospitality is a recognized hospitality leader. I, I, I'm going to do this little aerobic thing here from time to time. We have been recognized by Meeting Planners International, the American Hotel and Lodging Association, ASTA, IGLTA, 
Mr. Leslie was awarded the Torchbearer Award from Intercontinental Hotels Group, their highest honor for a hospitality professional. And Edwin is a member of the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Our current portfolio of properties range the gamut of hotels in disrepair. Some of them in financial disrepair, some of them in disrepair of the reputations, some of them in structural disrepair. We know how to bring hotels back to life. That's what we do. We've worked with the Hampton Inn in Scottsdale as a partner of the Talking Stick Resort. We just finished helping finance and build the Dream Hotel in Los Angeles. The Pinesco Del Sol Hotel is on the northern coast of the um, Sea of Cortez in Mexico. The Crown Plaza Phoenix Airport, a wonderful facility that serves the Phoenix um, Airport. The Stanley Hotel is widely known as the hotel from The Shining. And we went in and completely restructured, yeah, the two twins were there the whole time. Um, we went in and restructured their entire loan. The Carefree Resort and Conference Center was a city-owned resort uh, in Carefree, which is the city just up from Scottsdale. La Berge de Sedona is a world-class resort in Sedona. Lajitas Golf Resort and the Big Bend Salmon Falls Fishing Resort in Ketchikan, Alaska and the Bahia Cabana Oceanside Resort. These properties are just a skip across the water of the work that we have done in the hospitality industry. Just down the road, about four hours in Omaha, about starting about a year ago, opening about six months ago, we took the Ramada Plaza Hotel and turned it into the Hotel RL Omaha. Next to it is our sister property, the Doubletree, at Sarvin Midtown. They act as sister properties. They work in concert with each other. There's a water park attached to them that is currently called Coco Key, but at the end of this month will be rebranded the Quicksilver Falls. And the Omaha Conference and Events <coughs> It's a property similar to yours, but, but very different. It's more of a conference center than a convention center. It doesn't have the grand room that you guys have, and you couldn't put anything tall into it. So here today, we are here to talk to you about the Hotel RL in Waterloo. This is what we want to turn your current Ramada Plaza, or Ramada Hotel into. Boy, she's a beauty just standing there, leaning into the wind like she does. But when we get done with her, we hope to make her far more progressive in the way she appears to the city landscape. We'll clean her up. We will redo the interior. We'll give it a presence so that it, it makes a statement in your community. The Red Lion Hotel Corporation is a resurgent hotel corporation. It was a huge company 10, 20 years ago. It had some hard times as well, but they got an influx of cash and an influx of capital and a new vision. And that new vision includes them being community and service focused. This is a company that invests in the communities where their hotels are. There are over 1,100 Red Lion hotels. There's 72,300, give or take, rooms. That's a pretty good sized hospitality company. There are only nine hotel RL companies, so you have an opportunity to be a part of the authorship of this, of this brand. Um, the hotel RL started out as a boutique hotel company, but very quickly, boutique hotel, 80, 85 rooms. But it jumped very quickly to the average hotel of being about 250 to 300 rooms. And they are enjoying extreme success in the marketplace. They are not only community focused in their corporation, but they are community focused in the way that they position their hotels in the environments that they're in. They want the hotel to be a base camp, a base camp for people to stay in the hotel, but then go out and visit the community. Now, 
we have to be just a tad bit selfish about that because I have this giant convention center attached to it and I want to keep them in the convention center as well. But that being said, every hotel RL has, uh, we're mandated to have four bikes, two bikes per 100 rooms. Um, so four to six bikes that are just for the use of the people in the hotel to, ro to roam and ramble the streets. There's an advanced training platform for everybody at the front desk, at the coffee shop, at the bar, to tell people what's happening in Waterloo at that point in time. We want to be a champion for going out and exploring the community. Every hotel RL has to be opened up so that there is an, an open space. It's a communal space. We call it the RL Commons. Every hotel RL has a boutique coffee shop. Every hotel RL has one of the best cups of coffee you will ever drink. Project Wake Up Call is my personal favorite thing about Hotel RL. Hotel RL mandates that everyone that holds a Hotel RL flag in front of their property has to annually work hand in hand with a local charity, a local not-for-profit, where we partner with them. They can come and use our facility. We go support them. And every year, Project Wake Up Call is a celebrated part of the culture of our hotel. In Omaha, we partner with a, with a group called YES, Youth Emergency Services for Homeless Youth. And then there's the living stage. The living stage is that center point that ties all of this together. The living stage is a forum for not only emerging entertainment, but for book discussions and author talks and civic awareness conversations. It's a place where people can go and speak to the community. We also hope they enjoy a cup of coffee and perhaps have a drink at the bar, but it is there to be used. It's the heartbeat of the property. This is the commons area at the Hotel RL in Omaha. It is very similar to what we hope to build here. Now, for those of you that know the Ramada. If you walk in and then turn to the left and go into the bar, the bar would be opened up and part of uh, reception would be there. But as you move to the back towards the pool, all of that would be opened up. It'd be, become a grand spacious area. These, these steps that you see are part of the, the standard of the property. You sit on the steps, there's USB ports to plug in, there's free Wi-Fi for everybody, have a cup of coffee and listen to what's going on with you. The property will have a living room feel to it. It'll be, it'll be home away from home. The rooms will be updated. Lord God, I hope the rooms will be updated. Um, I enjoyed a good night's sleep in mine last night, but the rooms will be updated. Um, 240 rooms. The business center, we put across from Project Wake Up Call, so it's in the open area. As people walk by it, they will learn about that year's partner, that year's charity. The Five Southern Brothers Convention Center. We are proposing to rebrand it the Waterloo Convention Center at Sullivan Brothers Plaza. This is important. This is very important. The Waterloo Convention Center serves, as a name, serves two things. It tells people where you are and it tells people what you are. At Sullivan Brothers Plaza, continues to give respect to the Sullivan family. We want to put a new, a new face on this convention center. We want to make it fresh. We want to make it new. We want to make it crisp. And we want to make it, as, as best we can, progressive. The competitive set that you guys compete with here is extraordinary. This is a really competitive business to stay in. And, uh, your space has some really interesting attributes to it. And I've marketed a lot of convention space in my time. But the fact that you have no pillars in that building, 
the fact that it is an open core and there are no pillars to to bar anything from putting anything grand in there is a huge huge benefit to that space we want to close in the entire metal awning up top it's kind of an eyesore especially from my room at the Ramada <laughs> this is a stock photo um, but it's a clean photo it's a clean photo uh, this is a building that needs it doesn't need to be renovated it needs to be restored this building needs to be restored uh, and it and it starts with a lot of spick and span and a lot of elbow grease there's more than just conventions that happen in this facility the entire upper portion of it is set up for um, civic and social events I think that once again from the competitive set that's out there this is a huge opportunity not only for for the city to, to generate capital, but also for the city to make a difference. Uh, we look forward to bringing over the culture of Hotel RL into the convention center so that the convention center can be of service to the community uh, as well, whether it be your state of the city address or the chamber's annual meeting or some of the larger functions for uh, the, the city's business community. I, I think that there are opportunities to to hunt new business and bring that in, but to also farm the business we have and make it better. I think that with a new facility, you'll have a new perspective on service, and if the service matches the facility, you guys have a home run on your hands. Sullivan Brothers Plaza. I am uniquely excited about this part of, of the project. Leslie Hospitality will design, will be designing and developing a tribute to, to the five Sullivan brothers as part of its restoration of the convention center. The process begins with the request of submissions of conceptual ideas. How do, we, how do we do this? How do we begin to tell the story as well as pay tribute to these, these five men and their family? We want those ideas to tell us how we can pay the greatest amount of honor to the brothers while making, an, making this plaza an attraction all its own. I have a personal passion for education and I was telling your CFO today, wouldn't it be interesting if we built a small educational band of information that went around the whole plaza that, you know, there was a gentleman that just talked about civics here. You bring a fourth grade civics class and they walk around the outside of the building and and learn a little bit about the city's history. The tribute may be a single area where all five brothers are memorialized in one place. This has been the way the Sullivan brothers have been memorialized in the past, the motto being always together. Uh, however, there are opportunities to also spread the brothers out around the plaza so that they get an opportunity to perhaps be memorialized as, as individual people as well. Leslie Hospitality will be working directly with you, the City Council, the Mayor, and Leslie Hospitality works directly with the Sullivan family as well to make sure that, that the tribute is, is noble and, and recognized by the family. It used to be really easy. <laughs> it used to be so easy. We could just do a couple of ads and a nice brochure and maybe a direct mail piece and boom, the phone would ring. Um, it's not that way anymore. It's not that way at all anymore. Now we deal in advanced analytical digital marketing. We don't target people by demographics anymore. We target them by psychographics. We deal with people on a behavioral level. We go find meeting and event planners based on personality traits and professional tendencies. It begins with digital and social. There'll be a lot of crossover in the way we market the RL and the convention center. 
you'll see the same materials branded with both from time to time. Um, we want to talk about how we are new. We want to talk about how we are better. We want to talk about our service. The advertising for Hotel RL is, uh, it has a whimsical touch to it. It has a bit of whimsy to it. Um, Edwin and I, Mr. Leslie and I, uh, have taken it to somewhat of a new level where, and we, we didn't follow necessarily the rules as close as we should have with Hotel RL brand standards, but the CEO of Hotel RL actually called us both and said he likes what we've done better and they changed the standards. Um, you only live once, but if done right, once is enough, quote by Mae West. We have quotes by Jack Kerouac. We have quotes by Ferris Bueller. Um, it's a bit of a whimsy. We want them to come and enjoy and then visit the community and, and become ingrained in all the fiber that you guys have here. We also want to do standard, what's called SMURF advertising. SMURF stands for social, military, educational, religious, and fraternal. So, you know, let's do a scout troop trip down here and teach these kids something. The website is run by Red Lion. You'll also have a standalone website for the Convention Center. The Convention Center will link to the Red Lion site, just as the Red Lion site will link to the Convention Center. And together, they'll, they'll, they'll build a synergy in the way they're marketed. Collateral brochures for events, collateral brochures for weddings, collateral brochures for social galas, collateral <coughs> brochures. We deal in channel marketing here. You, there's probably nine to ten different segmented audiences. We would work with your CVB to make sure that we understand exactly what those channels are. But we want to create a new downtown Waterloo. We want, to, we want to continue all the good things that you guys have started. We just want to pull them across the river a tad bit more so that it's, it's out there in the, at the center of the corner of here and now. We look forward, we look forward to this project. This is a lot of fun. I love walking through hotels and feeling the bones of them when they're still sad and sorry. But if you squint your eyes real tight, if you squint your eyes real tight and look real sharp, there's still a great hotel and a great convention center in there. Thank you, John. Um, good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. My name is Edwin Leslie. I'm the President and CEO of Leslie Hospitality. Um, my address is 7815 Shirley Street in Omaha, Nebraska. And you're all welcome to join me at any time. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about the business points of this transaction and what we're doing here today. But John touched on something that I think that we have to talk about, which is social media. So before I do that, I need to correct John on two things that they got wrong. And one is, um, Kelly, you and I went back and forth when we were talking about the naming and things like that. And there were two things that I think really stuck with you and we went back to, but we haven't had a chance to modify. So I think one thing you'll be pleased to know is it's actually gonna be the five Sullivan Brothers Plaza and not just Sullivan Brothers Plaza. I think that was one thing you had asked for as well. And the secondary thing is, is that we're absolutely leaving the gold stars and sign on the back of the building like you asked. So those are a few things we hadn't done, and Mayor, I apologize, you're just finding this out as well. Um, but those are some things we are doing to try and accommodate as well some of the additional requests. Getting back to social media. Today you can pick up the newspaper and you can read things, or you can go on social media and you can type in the name Leslie Hospitality or Edwin Leslie, and you can find out everything you want to know and everything you didn't want to know. So in the last week to 10 days to two weeks to three weeks since we were here once before, We've been pretty much barraged with questions about who are we, why are we here, why should the city of Waterloo do business with us, are we trustworthy, are we credible, um, do we have credibility, are we financially strong enough to support this project, and my answer is, is I'm here to answer some of those questions for you, and as well for the public that we're partnering with. So starting with who we are, this company was formed in 1994 and originally started as Bridley Hospitality. 
Ridley Hospitality was a hotel company that consisted of five different partners who were part of this corporation. We had a number of hotel assets that we partnered in and a number of hotel assets that we managed. In the year 2010, I purchased all the outstanding shares of this corporation and now I own 97% of the company and at that time I changed the company name to Leslie Hospitality. So yes, Ridley Hospitality existed, technically still does if you ask the IRS. Same EIN number, same tax ID number, same everything, just a name change. We've gone through a lot of changes, but one thing that we haven't done is change our reputation, which is very good. Today LHC operates 27 affiliated companies all of which are solely involved in hospitality, ownership, management, and operation of hotel properties. We do operate separate companies. For example, Leslie Hospitality will be the operating company of the Hotel RL here in Waterloo, while LK Waterloo LLC will be the holding company and ownership company. The question was asked, why do we separate the operating companies and the holding companies? Well, the answer is simple, is we have private business partners who do not want to be exposed to risk financially and otherwise, so therefore we separate the two in order to shield ourselves from liability. We are a company. It's exactly what's done in business today. You shield yourself from as much liability as possible as you go into business. The good news is, is that I've been in the hotel industry for 30 some years. In those 30 some years, I, was, I have been appointed to the United Nations World Tourism Organization and as a member of the organization, the board is encompassed by 27 member organizations throughout the world that set policy on tourism, travel, safety and marketing of tourism on an international basis. I was appointed by Secretary of Commerce under the Obama administration and I still serve today under the current administration. Over the last 15 years, I've been appointed by three separate governors to serve on commissions, board, and trusts in three separate states. I'm happy to say I was actually appointed by three Republican governors, although I am a registered Democrat, so just in case you need to look that up. The appointments included Texas, Arizona, and Louisiana, and I've also worked with State Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, who was then Secretary of State of Louisiana, in the passing and development of the Goes On Bond Initiative to provide Goes On funding for the state of for the state of Louisiana during the hurricane crisis after Katrina. LHC Leslie Hospitality manages in excess of three hundred million dollars in loans, privately funded and held by one of California's largest private investment banking firms, Carlin Real Estate and Calmwater Capital Corporation. LHC manages assets and partnerships in 11 states, two countries, and with foreign and domestic partners. Leslie Hospitality has an ownership interest and has controlling interest in seven of the 27 properties that we either manage, operate, or supervise. Of those, I have controlling interest and I control the board and as well control the managing partners. So, we also are approved by the franchise companies for Red Lion, Hilton, Marriott, Holiday Inn, um, Radisson, Sheraton, um, Hyatt, and a few others, okay? So from a credibility standpoint, I think that we show that we have the ability to do what we're here to do today. Now the bad, like any corporation in America, we've had our ups and downs, okay? In the 20 some years of being in business, our company has had two hotels that have actually failed two out of 42, okay? We had a Holiday Inn in Houston, Texas that was the subject of multiple lawsuits and litigation. Um, that included an eminent domain proceeding with the state of Texas relative to expansion of the interstate and the freeway. In addition to that, we had a partner who was a partner in that entity at the time who was accused of misappropriation of funds and ultimately served time in federal prison for tax evasion. Okay. Due to that, we also had an issue with a joint partnership property that we had in Alexandria, Louisiana, which ultimately ended up in bankruptcy as well. The one thing I can tell you for sure, and I can show you the documents and share them with city council and attorneys, and I think I have shared them with the city attorney, is that in those situations, I was never accused of misappropriation of funds. These were business transactions that simply had bad issues, okay? So we have had our ups and downs. We've had our hurdles. We've been sued. We'll be sued again. We're a business. We're a corporation. It's what happens. The bad news is, is that from a standpoint of an ownership and operating company, okay, 
we don't take over assets that are perfect okay so yes you go to social media and you type in the name Leslie Hospitality and you look at truthfinder.org or you look at any one of these corporations out there that for ten dollars will sell your report and tell you everything you want to know about me it'll show you two pages of information that says there's 97 bankruptcies 17 lawsuits um, judgments tax liens oh I admitted I've also been sued by the IRS for a million dollars um I won though the other side of that is that you know when you look at public information you have to take public information for what it is worth okay where's truth and where is fact okay Leslie hospitality takes over properties that are distressed we take over properties that are suffering economically financially feasibly yes we took over Lajitas Resort and yes when you read the media online it looks like we're the bad guys because we took over a property that had 140 million dollars in development funds that somebody put into it and we took it over and we had it in bankruptcy and it ultimately survived because of the fact that our partnership group along with Kelsey Warren who loans energy transfer company which is one of the largest pipeline companies in the United States invested 50 million dollars in cash in the property stabilized it rebalanced it and we went from an eight million dollar annual operating loss to a profit last year Lehia's Resort and in this year Lehia's Resort donated 2.5 million dollars to the public library in Alpine Texas and the local community from funds from operating the resort <clears throat> when we took over Carefree Resort in Carefree, Arizona, just north of Scottsdale, I was assigned by Oryx Capital Partners, which is a Japanese investment firm, as a receiver to seize the assets of the hotel. Okay? So no, I wasn't everybody's friend. Within 45 days, the company that actually operated filed for bankruptcy to try to remove the receivership. Ultimately, I foreclosed on the property, even took it out of bankruptcy, and Oryx Capital Partners reinvested $15 million in the resort, repositioned it, remarketed it, and it now profits at about 3 to $4 million a year for Oryx. So it's now a profitable venture. At the time that we went through that transaction, the city of Carefree was owed $2.2 million in unpaid taxes. Okay, the Salmon Falls Resort shows up online as a bankruptcy. Okay, I was appointed as a trustee in a bankruptcy case. Okay, I went to Salmon Falls and met with a couple who were 86 years old, had built their entire life around Salmon Falls Resort, and built a resort that they sold to somebody when they were 86 and they wanted to retire. Okay, the company that bought it, which was a multi-level marketing scheme out of Florida, then 18 months later defaulted on the loan, didn't pay the payments, started selling the assets, and filed bankruptcy, and this 86-year-old couple was left with a piece of paper in their hand that said they were owed $7 million, okay? Ultimately, I worked with Shirley and Al White, who would stand here today and tell you that I got them back their $7 million because I got the property out of bankruptcy and I bought it for $7 million. So when you go online and you read and you find bankruptcies, foreclosures, evictions, lawsuits, these things, and you question my credibility, the only thing I can tell you is this, okay? I'm standing here today with three things that matter, okay? My reputation as a business owner, okay? I have $72 million worth of personally guaranteed loans to banks, including banks that exist in your town today, okay? I have $20 million in personal loans with Great Western Bank. I have $18 million worth of loans with Wells Fargo, okay? I have two loan commitments which I'll share with the city attorney and the city finance director so that they can review them. I won't share them for public record for obvious reasons, but showing that in the last 30 days I've just borrowed another $52 million from New York investment banking firms, okay? All of which are personal guarantees, okay? I have one thing in life and that's my credibility, okay? so. When I'm standing here today, I'm here to make Waterloo work, okay? And I will answer the questions, I'll take the heat. Yes, we've had hiccups in our business, okay? We're business people, that's life, okay? City of Waterloo gets sued, we get sued. We'll get sued again tomorrow. We may get sued when we do the transaction in Waterloo. But what matters is the fact that I'm putting my name on the line. Okay? I'm guaranteeing this transaction to the city of Waterloo. I'm guaranteeing this transaction to Plains Commerce Bank who's loaning us the money. 
okay? And I'm guaranteeing this to my employees who sit behind me every single day, go wherever I need them to go, and they bust their ass to do what they need to do to make our hotels a success. They will do the same thing in Waterloo, Iowa, okay? So if you had a pretty convention center and a pretty hotel, Edwin Leslie wouldn't be standing here today, okay? I'm here because of the opportunity. I'm here because the fact that I've sat down with business leader after business leader in this community and they're dying for a new hotel. They're dying for a convention center that they can be proud of, okay? I walked into the convention center today and there was a rotary luncheon and I have to tell you I wanted to crawl in a hole when I saw that there was a dessert table and at the end of each dessert table there's two bottles of squeeze whipped cream that you could shake out your own whipped cream. That is not what you do in a convention center, okay? We have the important factors. We have financing, we have credibility, we have a viable plan, we have the knowledge and experience and wherewithal to complete our plan, we have l lenders who are willing to support us, we have lenders who have supported us. Additionally to that, Red Lion Hotel Corporation is investing a million dollars of their own money in this project, okay? Of the 20 million dollars that we're <laughs> estimating to put this project together, we're only borrowing 10 million dollars. We've raised $10 million in capital to do this project. I have more investors lined up wanting to do this project. I could possibly borrow less money if need be, okay? A community of business leaders that know it's the right choice, the city, the city council, the mayor, that support this project and see the future of Waterloo in this convention center and the hotel property. Mayor Hart, I thank you and your council members for having us join you today. And we value your vision we welcome the opportunity to be a part of the Waterloo community and partner with you in the city of Waterloo as we invest in the future. And I welcome any questions you may have. So thank you, um, Mr. Leslie. If you hold on a second, I have, um, um, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait just a while. Uh, let's get through parts of the presentation, then we'll go for questions that have been unanswered thus far. Um, right now, we've been asked several questions in the past about you know, how many jobs and all of those things. So I'd like to have um, Noel Anderson please come up and walk us through the development agreement. What we've tried to do, of course, each development agreement, uh, there's two of them, one for the hotel, one for the convention center. Um, We've tried to break out the what all the pages, you know, they're, they're 20 plus pages each. We tried to break them out into bullet points um, as to what is happening with each one. The first uh, bullet point you see up on the screen is about the hotel agreement, basically talking about what Leslie Hospitality is doing. Um, they are buying the hotel. Um, they'll be investing uh, 14 to 18 million in the hotel in improvements and in acquisition of the hotel. They will be signing a minimum assessment agreement at $10 million. Um, that is in place until the year 2058 um, based on the uh, City of Waterloo Economic Development Policy for how many years of rebates versus how many years the minimum assessment agreement is in place for. Uh, the timeline to be finished with improvements before July 1st, 2019. They will pay for parking at the ramp with 200 spots reserved for them at rates determined by the city policy. They will hire no fewer than 100 employees for staffing of the hotel and convention center. I think it currently has about 19, so that'll be quite an improvement. 23. 23. They must maintain a four diamond rating hotel on the site for the term of the agreement. As a part of the agreement, the city will give rebates from the va added value of the current value of the hotel is 1.617 million. The rebates will be given at 20 years at 85%. The estimated value of the rebates is 4.3 million over that 20 year time span. The return of hotel motel increased value of this hotel only above the current revenue of 125,000 per year for 20 years. Estimated value of that is 3.1 million over that 20 year time span. I think as they noted earlier, right now the hotel is paying about 59,000 a year in taxes. Um, after this agreement, they'll be paying over 150,000 after rebates in taxes. So there's quite an increase to the city of Waterloo. The convention center agreement as a part of that, Leslie Hospitality will upgrade and renovate the facility at an estimated minimum cost of six million. <coughs> Again, it repeats that they will pay for parking at the ramp with 200 spots reserved for them at rates determined by the city policy. 
They'll sign an agreement to, with a timeline to start within six months and be finished within 18 months. The minimum assessment agreement for the convention center will be $5 million until the year 2049. Again, the 100 jobs will be created, again, talked about in the other agreement. There will be an escrow account at 4% or $100,000 minimum for maintenance and improvements needed in the future. A four-star diamond standard required. The name will be the Waterloo Convention Center at 5 Sullivan Brother Plaza. As a part of that agreement, the city will convey the convention center for $1, including the skywalk. Grants of $700,000 after exterior improvements are approved by the design, build, management team, and the building official. A grant of $350,000 after interior improvements <coughs> are completed. The city will not give incentives to another event center over 10,000 square feet for 10 years. The uh, property must remain a convention center unless the city gives consent to change. If the, consent, if the company changes it, the use without consent, the property would revert back to the city. So again, we're working to maintain that as a convention center. Rebates from the added value above the current value. Right now, the assessor has put that value at about 2.5 million. Rebates at 15 years at 34%. The estimated value of those is 355,000. A review board comprised of two city staff, convention and visitors director, the Main Street director, Waterloo Deve Development Corporation member, and a representative of a large convention user, and a member of the Leslie Hospitality staff will annually walk through the facility to review comments back from users. And there is a repurchase sliding scale agreement in place for if there was an immediate repurchase of the property. Again, the convention center right now is tax exempt, so it's paying zero in property taxes. It'll be paying over 160,000 per year with the agreement in place. That's just a snapshot of basically what the development agreements entail. No, both agreements are a, have a cross fault mechanism. So if one is in default, the other would also be in default. Um, Leslie Hospitality has put this together as a hotel and convention center project, and we're very happy to have it set up that way. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Um, and with regards to our adopted strategic plan, uh, it's goal number four, enhance the image of Waterloo and city to residents, businesses, inside and outside of the community. It also um, focuses on uh, the generation of um, uh, additional revenue for the city and also with strategy 4.5 to maintain and develop community service and city facilities that support uh, quality of place. Um, so that is now for this part of the presentation. I do believe we have some people in the audience that would like to uh, speak. And the first person I would like to call up is Krista Mihi um, to speak, please. Good evening, everybody. Krista Mihi, 237 Lovejoy. And I am the uh, president of marketing and shared services at VGM. We host uh, about 300 events a year annually. VGM does Atlanta, Las Vegas, Orlando, everywhere in between. Uh, we are frequent event hosts who invest significant dollars into providing impactful experiences for our customers. We also are a proud community supporter of Waterloo and as such have chosen to host our annual customer conference, Heartland Conference here in Waterloo for the past 16 years. Our 2017 conference wrapped one month ago. Uh, as you saw from the presentation with the photos earlier, if you have not had the displeasure of attending an event at the convention center lately, uh, you can accept my expert opinion that both the facility and the service are abysmal at that facility. Um, the current lease agreement the city has with the operator of the convention center provides no recourse for the service or facility issues. The current agreement does not factor in any standard level of service <coughs> or operation. And when we voice our concerns, 
uh, about the atrocious state of the facility or the complete lack of service personnel, we are left solely to argue it out with the operator, even though it's a city-owned facility. The city, as the mayor said earlier, should be embarrassed to be associated with the convention center facility as it stands today. I am in support of the new agreement with Leslie Hospitality for a number of reasons, <clears throat> some of which are uh, the first being that the agreement creates a performance review board, as Noel stated earlier, that will assess the service and facility level at the convention center at least annually and provides specific penalties for not meeting the standards. It's imperative that that group that Noel listed exercises that right and protects the city on an ongoing basis in a year <coughs> in five years and particularly 10 11 12 13 14 15 years from now when we really need it um, that's the best protection that the city has to ensure that the facility is a source of pride for the community and not an embarrassment as it is today the second reason that I support the agreement is <laughs> the requirement for the addition of staff at the facility. Currently the hotel is 228 <clears throat> rooms, the convention center is 40,000 <laughs> square feet, and there are 19 one nine employees. Newton's Cafe in downtown Waterloo has more than 20 employees. and. They maybe max out, I would guess, that maybe they could seat 100 people if they really worked at it. That is not an acceptable service level for a facility of those sizes. And having that written into the agreement obviously not only provides new jobs, <coughs> which is wonderful for the city, but it addresses immediately the lack of service in those facilities. And lastly, Mr. Leslie addressed this himself personally. You know, you can do your homework about them, but if you do your homework about Leslie Hospitality, they, they are the real deal. Um, this is not some fly-by-night corporation that is, you know, a multi-layer marketing scheme out of Florida that's gonna fleece us out of our money like that nice couple in Oregon or wherever they were. This is the real deal. Uh, it's not a plumber who wants to operate a hotel as a hobby, which is the current situation that we're in. These people are serious about operating a convention center and hotel that will make us proud. So I appreciate your support. All right, thank you. Questions hey. before I no, walk away? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steve Duss has had a, a considerable amount of conversation with the business community as well, and I would like to um, um, allow him his opportunity right now. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, you know, the first thing that I'll use is personal example again. Our organization had our annual event at the convention center for years. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Steve oh, yeah. Dust, Greater uh, Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber. 3712 Pheasant Lane. Thank you, whoever. Yeah. Um, after years and years, we left the convention center uh, because of the quality of service and the quality of the environment in the building, even separate from what had become dismal food service. We came back for only two reasons. Number one, the other place that we had moved to was sold and was no longer available for the space. And number two, we demanded that hy V be allowed to cater the food into the event and manage the event for us. Uh, that's the only reason that we came back. Um, second, we had a great volunteer in Jim McKernan with KWWL who assigned people to help us with our technology each year in the facility. We wore them out. Jim can speak for himself, but he got to the place where he refused to allow his people to volunteer to do the work for us or others because of the quality of the, of, of the equipment that he had to work with in the facility and the quality of the people that they had to bump up against in order to get the work done. We had to go hire a professional. So all of that's just my own personal experience. Last week, um, 
I distributed a letter to you and the entire council uh, outlining our support for this proposal. Uh, I do want to go back several months, as the mayor mentioned, assembling a group of people who had interest in the facility, interest in conventions, interest in promoting the region, and being able to give informed advice and opinion to uh, the city about the convention center business. Uh, the mayor was very open to our comments. Um, we were very frank with them about what we believed would be doable. Uh, and over a period of months, I have to say that this solution is the best that we could have imagined. Uh, in being able to reuse our existing facility, have a redeveloper of the hotel, being able to uh, upgrade the existing facility without expansion, uh, and aggressively market into a marketplace that is used to not considering Waterloo at all. So now we essentially have a brand new convention product to get back into the marketplace to recruit tens of thousands of people to your community every year, uh, to be able to bring as many of our statewide organizations as possible, like my own, which I wanted to have my local or our, our statewide chamber of commerce, the ABI, in Waterloo, could not do it because of the quality of the convention center and hotel. Now we can overcome that. We're a player in the market again with this kind of a proposal. So. Uh, for all the reasons that we outlined uh, last week in our correspondence, uh, we encourage you to positively consider this proposal from the Leslie organization. All right, thank you. I had a, another, um, no, no, I'm sorry, you're fine. Um, I had a, another correspondence. Um, Kelly, did you want to have some comments, Ms. Sullivan? You're fine? Okay. All right, uh, now I will open it up. Um, is there anyone else that is there anyone that would like to uh, address the council, the mayor, about the Sullivan brothers? We'll go to you, Aaron, and we'll go to the gentleman behind you. Thank you, Mayor. Aaron Buzza, 345 Derbyshire Road, Waterloo. I found a letter that uh, Mrs. Meehy addressed when she was the board president of the Convention and Visitors Bureau eight years ago uh, to then Mayor Clark talking about the condition of the convention center and need for additional investment. We've had far more conversations than I care to even think about. Um, Michelle, Mayor Hart, Mayor Clark, members of council, myself, our board, and this is the right solution. I would encourage you to support this because we've, we've explored many, many alternatives and there are no there are no alternatives waiting in the wings that don't require additional taxpayer support. Leslie Hospitality understands what they're doing. Leslie Hospitality understands how to operate a convention center and do it the right way. They understand how to operate a hotel and do it the right way. I have stayed in one of their properties. It was first, first class. Uh, there have been other bidders. There have been other people looking at the Ramada and the convention center, including one last summer but they walked away because the city couldn't say how much and how quickly they could invest dollars in the convention center. There's no other organization waiting in the wings to take this on, and the city doesn't have control of the, ho the, of the hotel. Without these guys, that hotel could fall into even worse hands than it's in today and fall into even more disrepair. So I would encourage you to support this. This is a good solution that doesn't fall on the backs of the taxpayers. That puts it in a that puts Waterloo in the conversation with Dubuque, with Iowa City, with Cedar Rapids, and with Des Moines in competition for uh, business from around the state and from around the region. Thank you all for supporting it. All right, thank you, Mr. Buzz, and, and thank you for your years of service at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. You will be uh, absolutely missed <laughs> in this area. So. Thank you, and wear a suit next time. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Walsh, I'm sorry. There was a gentleman right there that raised his hand prior to you, and then we will honor you. Uh, Lawrence Wheeler, 433 Bratton Over. I'm somewhat in favor of this project, but the 
there's a couple drawbacks that I would like to have strictly taken into consideration. If they were to uh, do some modifications to the uh, actual convention center itself, um, I would like to be able to see them be able to modify that building to accommodate arena football. Also, because the current young arena where the hockey team is at is insufficient to draw that kind of sport. And, and another thing too is that I would write to make sure that any contractors affiliated with this project be union labor, no outside scabs, because all that money leaves town. And if you if you got union people or their local people, that that strengthens your tax base. All right, thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, Mr. Wash, I think you were next. Jim Walsh, 315 East 5th Street. I'm here this time for JSA Development. Uh, JSA Development's a downtown uh, Waterloo property developer. We've got about 35 properties now and uh, have invested over 30 million in uh, downtown over the last 10 years or so. And uh, I wanna first start out by thanking uh, the mayor and uh, uh, the city staff and Aaron Buzza in particularly uh, for finally getting to this issue and dealing with it. Uh, as you recall, I was city attorney for 20 plus years here and five different mayors and 10 different city councils did not address this issue. Uh, they passed it on from one to another and let the, uh, not, I'm not saying that they did it in a bad way, but they didn't let the priority of taking care of the convention center or enforcing the hotel uh, arrangement that they did have uh, be, become a priority. So we ended up with what we got. Uh, and I'm here right now to say we do need this deal. Mr. Leslie knows we need this deal. Uh, for that reason, I doubt he's very amenable to much negotiation on this anymore. Uh, I wouldn't if I were him, but I gotta tell you that you're about to step into the same trap you stepped into with the old agreement. You didn't run it long enough. You don't have enough enforcement mechanisms in it. Uh, you've got uh, agreement that uh, has rebates for 15 years in one case and 20 years uh, in another case, and you can't claw those back. You've, you promised those irrefutably to him. I'm sure they're on his pro form. I'm sure he needs them to make this deal work, but you can't take them back. So if you can't take them back, then I suggest, what, oh, pardon me, you do have a clause in there to let you take a tiny bit back. Uh, if the uh, scoring isn't exactly what it should be, but the agreement does not specify what exactly you have to do to get there. The quality standards aren't very specific. So I'm suggesting that the rebate, or pardon me, that the uh, uh, committee that's uh, set up in the agreement be extended to both facilities, that it have uh, uh, the seven members on it, that it have the ability to score this certainly in conjunction with Leslie, certainly with interactive process back and forth to clear up anything, but it needs to run for the whole agreement and it needs to be enforceable for the whole agreement. Remember, we're here now because the agreement didn't provide enough specifics. It didn't provide ways to keep them from transferring the hotel from person to person until we ended up with a broke plumber owning it. Uh, and I, I'm not saying Mr. Leslie intends to do that. He wants to operate a great facility. We, we're all in all together on that. Uh, he's, he got, wants a great downtown, we want a great downtown. I'm sure he can do this just fine. The problem is the next guy and the guy after that will have no teeth in agreement to, to enforce it against them. I don't want to take any more of your time. I know you, you're going to have a tough night of it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. Um, we'll go the gentleman coming up. You come on, sir, and then we'll come to you, sir. He had already started walking when you. <laughs> David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, on your report, I hear that uh, over the last some time, we have, have used $4 million uh, toward the Civic Center, the Sullivan Brothers Convention Center, 
and yet at the same time I hear $195,000 per year in maintenance. Uh, that seems to me like a lot of difference in years or dollars or something that, uh, that results in uh, leaving the center in the shape that it's in. Uh, I, somewhere that doesn't calculate with me. The other question I have about this is that uh, when you sign this agreement, uh, are we signing it with Leslie Hospitalities or LK Waterloo? Or is Mr. Leslie going to personally guarantee that if anything goes awry, he guarantees that, that it will get straightened out? If we're signing with LK uh, Waterloo LLC, we know nothing about them. That's just a, a what do they call it, dummy corporation that can do anything they want to and, and slide out of something because there's no higher up Leslie Hospitality guarantee. And the other question I have is that when they when they say they're going to have 100 employees are they, and, and hi, highly, highly trained employees, are these employees going to come from Waterloo or are they going to be shipped in from other uh, cities, other areas, or are we going to employ, as the TIF stuff always says, that we want people to bring jobs to town and hire the people we have here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, before we go to this gentleman, Mr. Leslie, or no, do you want to address the LK? You, you talked about it earlier. But if you want to address it again for Mr. Dreyer, um, the the ownership. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, um, to readdress that comment or question, um, the agreement is with LK Waterloo LLC, guaranteed personally by Edwin Leslie. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, the jobs, jobs portion of it. The jobs, you know, I would say that probably 85% of the jobs will be local jobs. You know, you don't import waiters, service staff, things like that. So we're, you know, I know that we're talking to the community college soon yeah. and some of the other companies in town that do employment and things like that. So I would estimate probably 85% of the jobs will be local employment. All right. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have this gentleman right here who raised his hand prior. Then we'll go to Mr. Dillavu, and then I think you also, sir, had walked up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. John Bungie, 857 Lynn K. Lee Drive in Waterloo. I own and uh, president of Iowa Show Productions. We've been producing the home show at the Sullivan Center, which was the Conway Center since 1975. The home show is owned by the Waterloo Exchange Club and has been for 66 years. So. We've, we produce quality events throughout the state and have seen a lot of things. I'll give you one quick example of why we're very excited to have a professional management company managing this that like we have in other facilities that we work with. In 2016, our dates were displaced for our show less than six months prior to our event. And we fill every nook and cranny of, of the Sullivan Center. And we had already had half of our event sold to our exhibitors and we had to start over this I have colleagues around the country this is unheard of I'm embarrassed to even talk about it so it was supposedly a computer glitch we met with the staff for our 2016 event make sure everything were on on scale for 2017 well three maybe three months prior to 2017 it happened again I was a nice guy about it the first time the second time, there wasn't enough time to fight it because we wouldn't have had the show. And I represent the Waterloo Exchange Club. It's an embarrassment beyond, I can't even, can't even discuss it, it's, it's, it's crazy. So we're very excited to have somebody professionally managed. And when you talk about the minimal staffing, that's a, that's a real good example of the staff at the Sullivan Center, not in communication with the ownership and there's no, you know, there's no communication there. So we're very excited about it, to yeah. say the least. And I was uh, alerted about his situation through Aaron. So I do, one of the Dear John letters I had to write to kind of make sure that you were still able to get people to participate in the show. One of the letters I had written 
right. was to you as well to try to help with that. So right. huge inconvenience, um, unprofessional. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why we've been so aggressive to be here today. And so part that of that the is the, it's embarrassing for our exhibitors who are asking me, why don't we move this thing to the Unidome? There's gotta be a place we can move to. And I, it's hard for me to, you know, I don't want to move the, the home show belongs in Waterloo. Right. And, and uh, <coughs> our reputation is, is damaged from it. And yeah. uh, that's yeah. not the case for our other events. So thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dillavu. Forrest Dillavu, 1725 Huntington Road. This all sounds wonderful, and I believe almost all of it is. However, this is in the downtown TIF, which means when and if they start paying taxes, they go into the TIF fund. The $1.3 million that we are going to bond for and pay interest on will be paid by the taxpayers. When you put all of this money in the TIF fund, it never helps the general fund. It doesn't pay policemen. It doesn't pay firemen. It doesn't pay anything on the general fund. Also, along with that, when you TIF, that takes money out of the schools and out of the county. The state backfills what the school is going to lose. If this building turns from a million dollars to $10 million, which we hope it does, the state will then have to backfill that portion of money that they would have gotten out of that $10 million building. They will backfill it, and that will fall on the burden of the taxpayers that are paying the state funds. So you need to give the taxpayers some of that money and not put it all in the TIF fund. It's, it's like a good old boys network, the TIF fund is. The good old boys get it, the good old, good old boys use it. It's just like the, the bridge down here. Built with TIF funds, two change orders already, and those fall on bonded people, the taxpayers. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, no. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Actually, since it's now currently owned by the city and it's not creating any generating taxes, the taxpayers are definitely paying for the bond money. With this being paid by property taxes going into the TIF district, however, remember that the debt service levy is still released from the TIF district before it is contained within the TIF. Between the two projects, about $100,000 will actually be divided up going into the debt service, which goes, a portion of that goes to the schools, a portion goes to the county, and a portion goes to the city debt service account. Thank you. Mr. We got one right here, then we'll go to you, Mr. McCartney. Mr. Pearson. Yes, sir. Uh, Charles Pearson, 1750 Flower Street. Uh, first of all, I think uh, this opportunity that uh, these, these developers are bringing to Waterloo to take the Five Seven Brothers name and take it to the next level, I think that's like a, like a, a dream come true. Um, I think the bigger picture for myself, though, is the Five Seven Brothers and their family uh, was born and raised in the Sullivan Park area. So if you look at Sullivan Mem Memorial Park, I haven't heard since they had this conversation how the park could be inclusive to the development and also be inclusive to the, to the Grout Museum District. Um, I, I actually drove up here purposely because I, I met Kelly Sullivan some years ago and we actually had the same conversation some years ago. But uh, I was with the National Park Service and they have a new grant, it's called, it's for under, underrepresented communities grant. And what it basically does, it'll give you an opportunity to survey or come up with different projects in underserved areas. I think historically, Sullivan Memorial Park is when qualifies for a, a type of concept like that. Because the thing for me is like, um, if we able to do like a shared youth pathway, we could do a bike trail, walking trail. Um, these guys are already doing the Memorial Plaza. The Grout Museum District already has the Five Seven Brothers commemoration inside of it. I think this is a great opportunity when it comes to Irish American contributions, not just Irish American contributions, but when it comes to famous people that settled in, in Waterloo that's Irish American, there's more that we could do to commemorate them. So for example, the James Black building, if you know the history of James Black, he actually attended uh, First Presbyterian Church. There's an opportunity to partner with the church in Sullivan Memorial Park. If you know the history of St. Mary's Parish, which was a German Catholic parish, that was a school I think the Five Southern Brothers attended, but like right across the street from there 
is the house that Tom and Alita Sullivan lived in at one time. So, yeah, time is up already. No, you got one minute. It, it's going off a minute, a minute early. So if you hear the beat, it's, it's a, you have a minute left for some reason. Sure. Okay, so I think the bigger piece is, is, is also when you look at the history of the Five Seven Brothers, Tom Sullivan had a strong relationship with uh, the railroad industry. So when you look at the history of the Illinois Central Railroad, and especially like World War II, World War II was kind of big because when the Five Southern Brothers were killed, World War II was also a time when it was like quality issues when it came to the federal government. So not only did you have the issues of the brothers wanting to serve as five brothers, you also had some equality issues when it comes to other cultures and things. So my concern is, is that Sullivan Park right now is in a historically low to moderate income African American neighborhood. So I'm, my biggest concern is how the contributions of the African American community could play a factor into, into, into some of the things that the city has planned. And if I could help, I would love to get with Kelly and I would also love to get with the developers here and maybe have a conversation on how uh, Sullivan Memorial Park could also be part of this big picture and plans that the city has down the road. All right, all right, thank you, sir. Mr. McKernan, I believe you're next. Jim McKernan, 511 East 5th Street, which is a new address, by the way. It used to be 500 East 4th Street. The reason it's a new address is because we are on the verge of completing a major project uh, adjacent to downtown Waterloo that is probably two weeks from being away in partnership with the city, uh, our own company's uh, investment, uh, and historic and, and uh, federal, um, state and federal tax credits. So. My expertise is not in the financing or the tax issues with deals like this, but I have a lot of sales experience, marketing, public relations, and economic development. I'm here to strongly state our support uh, for the proposal uh, by the Leslie Company uh, to redo these two facilities in Waterloo. Uh, I was on the Chamber of Commerce uh, board in 1999 in Omaha, Nebraska, when they began the discussions of building what is now the CenturyLink Center there. And uh, a lot of controversy with it, uh, but it was passed. It's had a transformative effect uh, on the city of Omaha. Just as I know in my hometown of Dubuque, Iowa, the Grand River Centers had a transformative impact uh, on that city uh, with their riverfront development. I get around uh, to various cities. We cover 21 counties in Northeast Iowa. so. I attend events in Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque, uh, sometimes La Crosse, Wisconsin, Rochester, Minnesota. As Aaron Buzzin mentioned previously, we are completely surrounded by cities, by metropolitan areas that have superior convention and event centers to what we have here. And while we're in a global economy, uh, particularly with John Deere operations here in Waterloo, we're also in a regional economy, uh, which is uh, essentially the state of Iowa. We do not compete well uh, with the other cities in the state of Iowa uh, for this type of facility. So we believe uh, this is an essential economic component uh, to growing, in particular downtown Waterloo, where there's already been considerable investment made. One final thought. I left here in 1984. I was here, lived here. Uh, my first job in television was at KWWL. I left and spent 25 years in Omaha. When I came back, I was so impressed by the improvement that had been made in the city of Waterloo from what I left in 1984. The sole exception to that, for me, was the, uh, the convention center, which to me uh, is in fact uh, an embarrassing facility to try to present to people, particularly people from out of town. And I was sitting in my chair at KWWL for maybe an hour uh, when I started getting emails from people in our company saying, when I come to town, do not put me up in the Ramada. And, and that's for real. So, strongly support it. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Ms. Sullivan. Good evening. Kelly Sullivan, <clears throat> 2228 West 8th Street, Cedar Falls. First of all, I'd like to say I'm honored to be here tonight with my cousin Murray Davidson. He's the nephew of the five Sullivans and the, the son of Genevieve Sullivan. 
We support this decision. I just wanted to say thank you so much to um, Leslie Hospitalities and Mayor Hart for all of your communication. The key to a great relationship is communication, and we really appreciate that all that you've done. So thank you for the compromise, and um, we support this project. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Field, Mr. Field, and then uh, Mr. Sherbine. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, members of the council. My name is Hugh Field. I, li I live at 561 uh, Sunset Road in Waterloo. Uh, I actually grew up uh, on the corner of Fourth and uh, and Commercial. Uh, my dad's business uh, for the whole time I was growing up was located about where the entrance way is to the um, to the current convention center. <coughs> uh, Palace Clothiers and 520 Shop uh, were there for years and years and years. I think my dad bought it uh, in the middle, dad and uncle bought it in the middle 30s. So I, I, I have a feeling for that location. We were actually condemned uh, out of that location uh, and, and then it subsequently went, uh, well, to a number of places now. But uh, so I have it, this is kind of like home to me uh, and and I, as a, as a community person, I've been involved in a lot of events at the center, some involving people who were uh, running for president, uh, some who were vice president. Um, and, uh, and so this has been the site of a lot of events in our community. And I quite frankly would be embarrassed today to do that. And that has been what has happened with the f quality of the facility that we have had. It has gone from being a very presentable uh, perhaps 60s and 70 or 70s and 80s looking facility but to now being unacceptable and unusable for any of those kinds of events again today uh, I strongly urge you to look uh, I, I, I'm with Jim I want you to make sure that the four corners of them I'm, I'm still a lawyer the four corners of the deal that you're entering into are good and fair and are good for our community uh, but on the other hand I want you to get this deal done uh, I just as a side note, uh, my love of my life, my wife is from Omaha, and my, one of my favorite places on earth is the Stanley Hotel. Uh, so these are people who I, you know, they come from the right place and they know the right hotels. Uh, hopefully they can uh, do the same thing for our community. All right, thank you. Mr. Sherbon. <clears throat> Uh, John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. I think this is an opportunity that we haven't had before. Uh, I like to compare it eagles and or, uh, sparrows. You know, we've got a lot of fine business people in this crowd and all over. And the good businesses draw the good people. And we've got good people in this town. You know, our employees, our uh, Waterloo workers, everybody is very dedicated to what they do. We not, might not always agree with things, we agree with things, but uh, you know they're always there and they're always trying and they're they're trying to do the best they can with Waterloo. When we get the good help, you know, when you get good jobs like these gentlemen are talking about, and some of the other differences, it draws good people. Good things happen to good people, and uh, I think this is just a very rare opportunity that it's going to you know put a little bit more fire in downtown. We've got a lot of stuff going. But uh, we've also got a lot of, of problems that are developing too. And I think this is our chance to maybe turn the corner and really get to flying because there's some guys that really have done some hard work down here and it's really <coughs> looking better. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, address the council and mayor before we move to we council comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all. Uh, Todd Obadal, 124 Amity Drive. Um, it, it, was, it was great to hear all these people talk about, uh, I think it's, this is a good deal. And uh, I, I would like to share that opinion, but I have no information on which to base that. Um, the actual deal never got released publicly. My understanding is it came just a couple hours ago. I don't know how anybody can have an opinion on it. We had some comments that were submitted in writing that were, that was, strongly suggesting people should support this deal. 
How can that decision be made? I, I agree with the previous uh, gentlemen that were up here saying we need to take a look at this. We need to make sure we're making the right decision. This is a long-term deal. You know, we, we, need, we need to know who we're dealing with. We need to know who we're going to be dealing with five years from now, ten years from now. Um, I've been told quite a few times recently that I just need to trust that the, our city leaders are looking out for us and have our best interests at heart. I watched a video of the Sullivan Brothers Center and how it was not taken care of by the people that I trusted to take care of it. I'm sure when it started going downhill, when that, when that deal was made, that uh, the sales pitch wasn't, we're going to run this thing into the ground. And when they pitched the dog track, they didn't pitch what it looks like today. We need to protect ourselves. One of the ways we do that in one of the ways we do that is by following the rules. We allow people to see what the deal is. We, al we allow people to see if the numbers work instead of just taking people's word for it. Because sometimes people are just wrong. I'd like to see some better definitions. In the previous uh, <laughs> versions of the, of the development agreement, um, I, I, had, I had quite a few problems uh, with them. Uh, one of them came up before, uh, the idea of 100 employees. Uh, 100, how, many, how many are 100 employees? Do I have 20 full-time employees or 100 employees that work eight hours a week? How are we defining that? I didn't see any definition in that. We, we need to be smart about this. We need to, we need to uh, protect ourselves. Um, I am troubled that here we are in the second week of the fiscal year and uh, we're having the raise your taxes hammer held over our heads. Um, I think there's other options. This isn't an either or situation. As I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the meeting, um, it is required that any, uh, any purchase of any sale of real property uh, needs to be in public notice for four business days. And that includes the terms of the deal. We didn't simply sell this, pro this land for one dollar. There is a more complicated deal with it, and that, needed to, that needs to be out in the open so the city council and the general public can evaluate the deal. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to comment? <coughs> Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welfare. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing sale and conveyance of city owned property located at 200 West 4th Street, the Convention Center, in the amount of $1 to LK <coughs> Waterloo LLC and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Council discussion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Land. I looked at the numbers that Noel changed a couple just lately, which was good because we're going to we're going to put in eleven and a half million dollars. It's in this deal. That's what costs the city. The developer is going to put in twenty-four million. Um, I support that. We would have put much more than that in it, trying to take care of the convention center. Um, the only red flags I have are, are we really compliant with, are we complying with all the federal, state, uh, TIF project laws? Are we, are we sure we're doing this the right way? Are we, did we give plenty of notice, like Mr. Obadol says, did we, are we complying with all the TIF regulations? Are, have, has the staff reviewed that stuff? Um, and I've asked before, has Leslie and the affiliate companies, and now that I hear there's 27 affiliate companies, been fully vetted? I assume this, all this stuff has been done, so I'm going to trust the staff that it has been done because they're advising <coughs> us to take this deal. However, there are a couple things, and I've talked to several business people and bankers and lawyers three things we have to have, we should have. We should see a financing commitment letter. We should see an RL commitment letter. 
and the the project should be bonded, not the not the not the um, vendors, but the project should be bonded. And now Mr. Walsh kind of raises a clawback question: whether this is really a that good a deal for the city, which maybe we need to look at further. But I, you know, I support this deal. It sounds like a good deal. But there's, they're just the final few things I think we need to do to make sure that is, as Hugh, Hugh said, fair for all of us, for fair for both sides. And as a result of my analysis of this deal, I move to table until we get these issues resolved. All right. Second. All right, there has been a motion to table. Um, and uh, conversation about the table. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I oppose the table. I would oppose as well, just uh, for a lot of reasons. And I think that there's been smart people look at it. We've got smart investors who are encouraged about Waterloo as I think everyone in this facility right now is pro-Waterloo. I think that it's uh, uh, been run through the lawyers, run through the staff. I've had the opportunity to have visits and meetings, conversations with uh, a few people about this project. Um, so I'm going to be supportive of the project all the way to the end. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welker. I, I won't support tabling it either. Um, this has been a long time coming. And uh, I have to thank Mr. Leslie for wanting to make Waterloo proud again. I really appreciate you coming here. I guess I would like to see a bad deal better than no deal at all. And, I knew you'd get a reaction from that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not worried about a bad deal. Yeah, right. We cannot continue as we're going. All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Um, Jacobs. So I think uh, Councilman Lynn is looking for some more information. I think that's prudent that we look at information. I guess the question I have is, I think Mr. Overall brought up, and maybe uh, our city attorney could verify this, of have we properly uh, followed the rules on this? Have we notified the public in, in accordance to the rules on that? Uh, also, um, I think it is prudent that we do get some information. We've heard a nice PowerPoint presentation. Um, Mr. Leslie's agreed to personally finance it, which is great which means nothing until you see a personal financial statement, which we don't have access to, and Noel tells me we don't have it. Um, so we need to see a personal financial statement if we're going to personally guarantee something. So that would be a requirement of council. Um, I think a signed development agreement would be nice. This isn't even signed, um, at least when I have. It would be nice to see a bank commitment letter. We have a bank that's going to finance this, it'd be good to see a letter on that. It would be good to see a commitment letter from the RL, if that's possible. Yeah. No, you want to, we can't both sign that until we get an action, if I'm not mistaken, to tell us to. The developer has signed the development agreement. Okay. You would be signing it after, um, after approval by council. Just a couple of the things that were mentioned. Um, Someone had noted that uh, he could just go ahead and sell it and sell it and sell it and then it would be in the same situation we're in. Actually, they cannot sell a property, convey, or otherwise transfer title to the property. This is on page 7, number 17 of the development agreement um, without the city's consent. Obviously, the city will not unreasonably withheld that if they're selling it to another uh, third party, which has demonstrate, ex demonstrated experience of no less than 10 years and profitably operating one or more facilities of similar size and agrees to assume all ob obligations of company here under. So we've looked to uh, work on, uh, if it was to be sold, we'd get another good company in here. 
Um, also, uh, number four on page two of the development agreement for the convention center, uh, city shall have no duty to convey title to the company until company delivers to city reasonable and satisfactory proof of financial ability to undertake and carry on the project, um, which may take the form of a lending commitment letter. And I believe Mr. Leslie did note that he would share some financial information with the city attorney and the CFO to be looked at um, if necessary for the uh, proper execution of this, but not for public knowledge. Yes, Mr. Leslie. If I may, Mayor, I've been yes, listening sir. to some of the questions and comments. I did want to address a couple of things. Is that um, the as I read it, the development Leslie, agreement. Um, the the and these are these are in accordance to the motion to table and Councilman Lynn's uh, three things that he listed: the financial commitment letter, RL commitment letter, and will the project be bonded? So right now we're only dealing with his motion to table. So this is in accordance to those three, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. Um, in re reference to those, the RL commitment letter can be delivered within 48 hours. Once we have approval from the city, RL will commit. They're fully committed. They've met with Aaron Buzza and the convention center staff, I think, and I don't want to misquote, but I think their vice president of development was here. Okay. Um, contract bonding, we require all contracts to be bonded. At, I believe is a condition of our development agreement, if I'm not mistaken. I think that can be addressed easily. And financing commitment is already a contingency in the agreement whereby we can't close the transaction until the financing commitment exists from a lender. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I'm the only council person who hasn't made any comment on this. And one of the things I, I, I just have to say, I cannot support a motion to table simply because I'm hearing a lot of lack of trust. And for me, I've been on this council for two years, and somewhere down the line, we have to learn to trust the staff and the job that they are doing. I understand that there's been some lawsuits and a lot of different things going on, and I know I'm doing a lot more talking than I normally do, <laughs> but this is something that is very important for the city of Waterloo. And somewhere down the line, we as a council have to trust the staff and the job that they are doing because if we don't we're going to be sitting here all night so for me i cannot support a motion to table i just can't all right sometimes saying less is saying more yes sir um you know i don't think anybody up at this table is not supportive of the ultimate goal here uh we all want to see change in that convention center we all want to see change in that hotel but we have a fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of Waterloo. That is the number one priority that we have. And when we have two former city attorneys stand up and say, you know, this agreement may not be quite as tight as what you want, to say, well, that's okay, we just won't listen to them because we're smarter. I, I just think that's very irresponsible. Um, there's, there's a couple other things about this uh, agreement that troubles me, this lack of communication. And, and Mr. Leslie, no offense, but you know, there's a lot of Waterloo's in the United States. There's a lot of Waterloo's in the world. There's only one five Sullivan brothers. And I don't think that you understand that. And I don't think a lot of people in the audience get that. I think that is probably one of the biggest marketing tools you could use instead of calling it the Waterloo Convention Center. You could call it the new five Sullivan brothers, but that, that's a different point. But I do think that you know, what we're talking about here is there are a couple loose ends that I think from a fiduciary responsibility standpoint need to be tied up. Nobody here is, is talking about voting no on this. What we're talking about is tabling this until some of these fine line questions can get answered. I got a copy of the, what was I thought the final development agreement at six o'clock Sunday night. Now I think I heard that's changed. Um, Th this is a moving thing, and to vote in favor of it when I defy any one of you seven to tell me exactly what it is you're approving, I, I think is, I, I don't think that's something we can do. I think we need to table this until we have the final documents, the final information that we need, and then we need to have a vote. All right, thank you for your comments as well. So um, all seven council members have uh, spoken. There is a motion to table this that is on the floor right now we will honor councilman lynn's motion to table with a vote a uh, roll call do we vote. need to have a time frame for the table we normally do don't we um how oh, sir 
I mean, don't we? You made the motion. Yeah, Sir, what would you like to well, do with the link? Indefinitely until these issues are resolved. It may be two days, maybe a month. Who knows? Indefinitely. He wants to table indefinitely. Well, I, and it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean what it sounds like. It means until we resolve these issues. And some of these issues won't be done until there's a commitment on certain parts. <coughs> Um, well, for instance, just a signed agreement. I don't know why we don't have a signed agreement. How can we vote on a contract that's a not signed? development agreement? Yeah. Because he signed the development agreement, but council has to authorize the actual project, and then that's when I sign it, and then it's finito. But right now, we have the developer that signed the agreement. I can't sign it until four council members giving me the authority to do so. If that, if, is that correct? When, when did that agreement get signed, just out of curiosity? Michelle Wiedner, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Leslie actually signed the first version of the development agreement prior to the first presentation that we provided to you on June 26, which we did intentionally to give the community and all of you plenty of time to absorb it. Um, we got feedback from that and in an effort to accommodate probably far too many <laughs> negotiating opinions, uh, Mr. Leslie and his company have been very gracious at working with us to continue <coughs> to <coughs> compromise and change that agreement. Um, we were still doing that this Saturday. A as of this afternoon, the CVB board called us this afternoon and didn't like two words. We took two words out. Um, he did sign it, the most recent version, about 5 o'clock today when it was printed. Um, I believe that staff has informed you about every change that has been made. The only changes that were made over the weekend were really to some of the exhibits. Um, you had current documents, I believe, were emailed to you Friday. Um, and all we did is change agreements. Your questions about the financing commitments, we have done this before. A prime example is the TechWorks uh, building where the deal was subject to the, the CFO and the mayor reviewing financing commitments and those, can't, those same deal, the banks weren't going to provide those until they had a signed development agreement. We had a closing, we reviewed all those prior to closing. Um, I think that's our job to provide to our citizens. And I, I think that's routine and we will continue to do that. So I, I don't feel that there have been material changes since the documents you saw. Uh, if there are any questions you have, we did provide them to you. We've made ourselves available for questions, so anything you want to know, we will try to respond to. You've already commented, Mr. Obadal, there's point no more. No, there is no point of order. Point I'm the order point I'd of like order. To ask where the actual document is that we're voting on. What are we actually voting on? The hearing is closed. Who has a copy of it? It's not online. It still says 50% tax rebates online. Last copy I had said 34%. My point of order is can the public know what exactly is being voted on? We just went through an entire presentation and we actually pulled out line by line the most <coughs> important parts of that development agreement we aren't just voting on the most important parts presented on all of it those are the bullet points that we've been asked about talked about those are the points within there i'm not going to continue to talk to you about it you've had your opportunity to address the city council i didn't interrupt you so council is discussing those are discussing those items right now so if you do not if you do not if you do not there's a point of order and i'm telling you the point of the order as presider of this meeting i have been very respectful you present it to the council not going to spend any more time on that if you would please take your seat i'm asking you please take your seat and let us vote on this motion to table so I'm understanding that we are voting on something that the public does not know. We're voting on tabling it. We're voting on tabling this item right now. All right, so right now we have a motion to table, uh, Madam Clerk. 
Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Powers? No. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? No. So the motion to table fails. Um, Call the question, Mr. Mayor. Question has been called. Okay. Madam Clerk, and this is to approve the sale and conveyance. Approve the sale and conveyance, which was read a little bit earlier. So it's a resolution authorizing the sale and conveyance of city owned property located at 200 West 4th Street Convention <coughs> Center in the amount of $1 to LK Waterloo LLC and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Abstain. On what grounds? What, yeah. I have incomplete information as I've already explained. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? I'm going to abstain on lack of, uh, based on lack of information. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Abstain. Same grounds, I would assume. Um, actually, um, my uh, work uh, situation. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, so we have, uh, that was... for me to continue. Hold on one second, we'll see. Okay. All right, so that motion carries. Uh, who's reading? I am. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution approving a development agreement with LK Waterloo, LLC, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said agreement. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Abstain for the same reason. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Abstain. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? I abstain. Mr. Morrissey? I'm happy to say yes. Is that it? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leslie. Thank you, audience, whether you were for or against this opportunity. Uh, thank you for your voices. Uh, and uh, we look forward to a, a, a great opportunity moving this community forward. All right, now let's get back to the resolutions. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt, you like can you take, take about six, three, seven, and eight, please? Yes, sir. Item number six is adopting a resolution. Oh, you know what? let's wait a minute, shall we? Is that all right? Yeah. Number six is adopting a resolution approving a supplemental agreement number one with AECOM Technical Services Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa in an annual in amount not to exceed $47,500 in conjunction with the fiscal year 2018 East Fifth Street parking ramp repairs contract number 930 and authorize the mayor to execute said document. Excuse me, Mr. Schmidt. Um, if, uh, if I could ask uh, if we could take the party outside. Uh, so we can finish up business. Thank you, sir. Item number seven is adopting resolution approving the construction related services agreement with AECOM Technical Services Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa, in conjunction with the projects contained in FAA Grant 3 19 0094 0045 at the Waterloo Regional Airport and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And item number Eight is a resolution approving award of contract to Kroll Inc. of New Hampton, Iowa, 
in an amount not to exceed $2,128,833.19 in conjunction with bid package number one, reconstruction of taxiway Charlie, base bid only at the Waterloo Regional Airport, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Uh, those <coughs> motions have been made with the second. Council, questions about these items? Madam Clerk? Or community, any questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. All right. 9, 10, and 11. Ms. Someone, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move to adopt the following resolutions. Number nine is a resolution approving award of contract to Astro Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount not to exceed $575,859.35 in conjunction with bid package number two, runway 1230 payment joint repair at Bravo One, crack seal preventive maintenance, and the repainting of airfield pavements at the Water Regional Airport via FAA contract number 3-19-0094-0045 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Number 10 is a resolution approving contracts, bonds, and certificate of insurance with Pella Roofing and Insulation Inc. of Benton, Iowa for improvements associated with hangar number four at Waterloo Regional Airport in the amount of $65,995 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Resolution number 11 is to approve contracts, bonds, and certificates of insurance with Plum Tech Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa for improvements associated with the HVAC system for the General Aviation Terminal Building at Waterloo Regional Airport in the amount of $19,556 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Mr. Lane, could you take number 12 too? Did I? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, number 12 is a resolution approving memorandum of understanding between the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, <coughs> Office of the Controller of the Currency, Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, and the City of Waterloo. Second. All right, the motion has been made with the second for 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, comments or questions about these items? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I just wanted to add that, uh, that Councilman Lind had read hangar number four when my document says hangar number five. Where's that? Uh, uh, number oh, 10. Two, okay, duly noted. All right. Any other questions on these items? <coughs> Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Walper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. All right. Could someone take 13 by themselves? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving a development agreement with LK Waterloo LLC for property located at 205 West 4th Street, Ramada Hotel, for renovations to the hotel with a new taxable value of 10 million, 20 years of tax rebates at 85%, and 20 years of Increase hotel motel increment and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Questions about this one? Madam Clerk. Mr. Schmidt. I'm going to abstain on this motion also in conjunction with the previous motion. Mr. Wilper. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Staying due to my working relationship with the bank. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Abstain. The same reasons? Yes, sir. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right. Someone take uh, 14 and 15, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Item 14 is adopting a resolution approving a permanent easement agreement with Grand Investments LLC for the purpose of allowing access to city owned flood wall located west of 425 Cedar Street and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And item number 15 is adopting a res resolution approving an early access agreement with Cardinal Construction, Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa to allow earth moving activities in preparation of development of the site northwest of 1318 Martin Road and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Second. The motion has been made with a couple different seconds. Uh, uh, any comments? Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. one quick question on number 15. If they get in there and start doing some work and we don't fully support the development agreement, 
are we going to be in trouble no. with them? Joel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. Uh, Mr. Mixdorf is here from Cardinal Construction to talk about that as well. Um, obviously, we are proposing a development agreement with Cardinal Construction um, in accordance with our city account development policies. Um, so I'm not sure where the concern would be for the structure of the development agreement. Um, but obviously, there is some risk here by doing the uh, early entry that they go in there and start moving around dirt activities. And then for some reason, the council did not support the development agreement. Um, they would have moved dirt out there. And granted, the moving of the dirt out there will require uh, working with engineering and, and all that for stormwater detention and, and earth moving activities for an approved plan. Um, but obviously, they would be a little bit of risk um, moving it prior to full execution of the development agreement. Are they doing this at their peril? That would be correct. Yes, sir. Noah, while you're up there also, number 14, could you just tell us a little bit about that? Number 14 is obviously uh, the city of Waterloo previously approved a development agreement with uh, Grand Investments on December 19th, 2016 for the development of the Upper Plaza project. It would be a seven-story, 70-unit uh, project right there on the riverfront. That lot was designed there as part of the Riverfront Renaissance plan to have an upper uh, story housing development there. They are right next to the flood wall, so we had some certain easements in place in the deed, but this is a further easement to allow us to clear um, authority to go in there and work on the levee wall in case it needs repair or, or replacement or something like that, and they'll be up next to that. So we would actually be uh, going inside of their uh, ground floor parking area for potential replacement in there. That's what the purpose of the easement. Have we had issues with uh, integrity of our dikes and levees? Is that? No, we have not. Nowhere in Waterloo. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Madam Clerk? Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, those items carry. Number 16, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrison? I'd like to make a motion to receive file consider and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2007 City of Waterloo Code of Ordinances by enacting a new Title VI Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 1, Traffic Code by adding Section 4, Automated Traffic Enforcement. Second. A motion has been made um, to second. I, I do have a quick question. Uh, Chief, um, when we originally started this conversation, uh, part of our challenge I believe at our uh, most unsafe intersections, um, was it due to speeding or was it due to, a, to uh, not obeying that traffic sign or signal, like uh, rolling through a red light or? Uh, Dan Trollk, the Chief of Police, uh, most of them were due to a combination of both, failure okay. to yield and speeding. Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Yes, sir. Jim Chatwin, 224 Birch. Uh, after riding around Waterloo the other day, I was thinking about the red light cameras and, you know, some of these you come up green, bang, they're yellow. Do I stop? Do I go in the middle of the intersection and stop? What do I do? A, a fellow worked for me a few years ago, entered a yellow light, so he said, and he got pulled over for going through a red light. So how are these people on the other end going to read it, you know? I got, I got a little problem with it. I would just as soon see high crime areas have cameras rather than the red lights that's my opinion thank say, you say that one more time i missed that last part i would just as soon see cameras in high crime areas opposed to the red light cameras and the police know exactly where the high crime areas are okay thank you thank you sir <laughs> yes sir Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little height challenged here. <laughs> um, Eric, do not 610 East 4th Street, Waterloo, Iowa. Um, I don't know what item my comments would pertain to, either item 16 or item 18, but the Waterloo Commission for Human Rights would have some concerns about how, where um, the placement and positioning of 
uh, of speed cameras or monitor monitoring cameras would affect minority populations. Um, to piggyback on comments made earlier by Dr. Adderley, earlier in the meeting. He took off too, didn't he? Okay. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Chief, if you want to reach out to um, Executive Director Funches for uh, the Commission's opinion on that, that would be great. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, could we maybe have, a, just for the audience at home, have a little overview about what 16 is? All right. Could we do that? Yeah. Sixteen is the uh, passage of an ordinance that would allow us to engage in automatic traffic enforcement. Uh, we've identified 13 intersections in the city of Waterloo where we have a high incidence of crashes where uh, we're confident that if we install uh, cameras, speed enforcement cameras, not speed enforcement, but red light cameras at, those, at six of those intersections, we will decrease our crash rate. Uh, the company we're, we're desiring to work with also offers handheld speed enforcement units that the officers can utilize, as well as a speed trailer unit that we could use in school zones and areas of the city where we get many complaints. Uh, the ordinance we're looking to have adopted is the one that Cedar Rapids utilizes. Basically, it's word for word. Uh, but it suits the needs of Waterloo. We're not talking about any stationary speed enforcement units, uh, but when it comes to speed enforcement, we would like to utilize a speed trailer and had handheld units that officers are utilizing. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's any city in the state that is using the handheld units yet. I believe we'd be one of the first. And, and what do you like about the handheld versus the stationary? I mean, that, that just seems to be real inefficient to me. Uh, I like the fact that an officer is actually going to be observing the violation and it's going to be validated by the handheld units. So there's officer interaction. Uh, that's what I like about it. Uh, the problem I have with uh, the fine structure and fee that's established by the state is uh, the amount is getting uh, quite high. Uh, right now for going 11 miles per hour over in the state of Iowa, it's a $222 fine. Uh, that hurts. Mm -hmm. Uh, when that guy's going out to, uh, and yeah, speak, he's breaking the law, but when he's heading out to a meatpacking plant uh, and the officer pulls him over and sees two child seats in the rear seat, uh, the cops are human. That's hard to write that ticket. So across the state, across the country, we're seeing officers writing fewer and fewer speeding tickets. Uh, this helps fill that void and still helps hold people accountable. Thanks. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Chief Troll. I know one of the issues that comes up repeatedly about this, uh, not so much with the red light, but with the um, speeding cameras, is who's going to have access to that? Um, I, I mean, beyond you, uh, but the company that's, is it the same company going to be involved with that that's involved with the red light? Yes. Okay. And so can it go beyond that? And can it um, catch or can it um, uh, finger other people for doing things I don't mean it that way uh, but can it point at other people that it's not intended to point at and is there a privacy issue that's associated with that chief uh, it's a secure system I guess I uh, Mr. Morrissey I don't fully understand the question you're asking but it, let's say we have a bank robbery or something or a child abduction we would be able to access the system and acquire uh, the recordings that this system grabs. Yeah, and what I was asking was, besides the law enforcement police here and uh, the company, can that information be then um, sought or taken by any other agency for their use? It cannot, no. Oh, okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Um, so the handheld speed camera is right. not Sorry, I'm gonna turn that off. stationary, it, it's mobile. So if the nine intersections or six intersections that are identified, uh, if they're somewhere other than Franklin Street, for example, that speed camera can be used there for speed only? Or does it have to be centrally located around 
the uh, system at those nine intersections or six. The red light cameras would be, we use them at our worst intersections. Right, right. Uh, they the can speed. be, with, with effort and time, they can, if, if, let's say one of these intersections improves uh, tremendously, we can move it to another problem intersection uh, with a little effort. Uh, but the, with the handheld units in the trailer, completely mobile. We can go where, and officers are like, uh, they're like fishermen. Right. They go where the fish are biting. That's my question. It's mobile beyond it's mobile. that intersection. Yes. Okay. All right, other questions? Yes, sir. <coughs> Lawrence Wheeler, 433 Brad, number of Waterloo. The only, I, I, as far as speed cameras, I don't have no problem, but red light creates a problem. I've heard horror stories of people getting tickets for going through a red light as part of a funeral procession. Um, they, they need to waive, put a, a stipulation in this uh, red light camera that funeral homes put an F sticker right above the driver's um, um, line of sight because it's not fair to ticket someone who is in a funeral procession that has the legal state right away. Okay. And uh, that, that's, the, that's the biggest problem that I have regarding red light cameras. Other, but there are problems right there, Broadway and Conger, where people are going through the red lights. And, um, but I would like to be able to see something put into place where it won't interfere with uh, funeral processions. And people, I've noticed, get road rage part of the 63 detour, when, especially when there's a funeral procession leaving Queen of Peace. All right, so uh, Chief, in response to uh, the questions, uh, funerals, and I guess we can add parades to. Uh, yes, sir, it's uh, funeral processions are in the ordinance and we'll add parades. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Madam Clerk, uh, roll call vote on this first reading. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Uh, Madam Clerk? Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? What's the timeliness of this, Chief? I still need to bring the uh, contract to the council for review, so we have time. No. Thank you. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? No. All right. So. Uh, that will come back before us uh, uh, next week. <coughs> Number 17, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. 17 is a motion received, file considered and passed for the second time an ordinance amending the 2007 City of Waterloo Code of Ordinances by amending Title V, Police Regulations, Chapter 5, Chronic Nuisance Properties, Section 1, definitions by adding O, fireworks, to definitions. Second. A motion has been made with the second chief. Just uh, we talked about this uh, previously. Uh, can you give us the hundred foot level? Uh, there was a work session a little bit earlier about uh, just taking a look at fireworks in general, and they are banned currently. But uh, we want to do some enforcement for those who break the law. We've found that the chronic nuisance ordinance has been very effective in Waterloo. Fireworks was not included under the calls for service. Uh, with the evolution of the state code, it was just, uh, this is a way for us to address that chronic abuser. And not only can we cite them, but we can start charging them a police fee. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, council or uh, community? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. And we, we kind of ran this by the landlords. They're okay with it now. What, because based on what we heard last time, we work with the landlords to make sure 
they don't get caught in some, you know, trap that's, that that's they don't know question. is going to happen. With, with At least what? that's what Mr. Zelfer said, that they, this is just a procedure to get the bad guys to obey the law. The right. We uh, we had a pretty extensive uh, conversation with the landlords when we developed this ordinance two or three years ago. Uh, this is just a, a minor minimum tweak that uh, I venture to say they would generally support. Thank you. Mr. Lynn may have been out of the room uh, the last time we talked about this, but the question is, landlords do not get notified on, on this or on the previous thing until the third notice. So you or I as a homeowner, we violate it, we get the first notice. Rental property goes to the renter, they throw it away. Second one goes to the renter, probably throw it away. Third one then, now it's now we're going to fine them, and that's when the landlord gets notified, correct, Mr. Zolliver? No, they don't get fined right away. They get the, uh, they get a notification on the third on the third notice, yes. which is the first one they've seen, but it's the third one you or Mr. Zolliver or whomever sent. Correct. And that was the complaint I heard from the landlords is they were not being notified until it was fine time, and that was their frustration with that. And a landlord representative was planning on being here tonight, couldn't make it. That I'm going to vote to not suspend the rules because he said he was going to come next week. For the same thing and i thought david that you agreed with me last time that that was true and that's maybe something we need to fix or if um if we go through with the first reading we can send some communication if we if we didn't to send it to the associations and do uh, our due diligence i mean i'll, I'll vote in favor of the second one but i'm not going to vote to suspend for that but that's the reason that, that we need to have like a further conversation ultimately it's the right thing yeah. Yeah. okay all right uh, Madam Clerk, on this second reading. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Mayor. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend it? Yeah. Yeah. Second. <laughs> Who has the first? Who left the room? He said, yeah. Uh, so it's been, been a motion to suspend, and we heard the earlier conversation about some more outreach. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Amos? No. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? No. All right. Cool. Pick that up next week. Number 18. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive file consider and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2008 traffic code by deleting subsection uh, parenthesis 55 parenthesis Park Avenue and section 541, increasing speed limits in certain areas and asserting in lieu thereof a new subsection parenthesis 55 parenthesis Park Avenue and section 541, increasing speed limits in certain areas. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Um, oh, we'll uh, can we get uh, an so overview, Chief? Uh, that's Sandy. Uh, no, oh, that's that Sandy. Someone. <laughs> oh yeah. It's been a long, long day. It feels like. Okay. Um, Sandy, uh, this is for Park Avenue, and this ordinance, or the title to this ordinance, is not always increasing the speed limit it could be lowering one also so what what we are presenting to you is to keep the um, speed limit from Wellington to South Street on Park Avenue at 30 miles per hour because that's what it is all through town from south to Walnut to lower it to 20 miles per hour this is where the bikes uh, protected bike lanes are going in we're starting to paint those today and um, this will um, lower chances of crashes and it will also um, give families with kids um, the opportunity to travel on Park Avenue from bike trail to bike trail and be a lot safer with the lower speed. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think to, to add to that point, um, this is a change uh, for folks in the way that we've done things. So I think Mr. Morrissey um, contacted me earlier and asked if we could do some type of informational sessions uh, to help people 
you know, make it through the adjustments, whether it's uh, YouTube, whether it's uh, online, whether it's through media, but do some type of outreach to help people navigate through the change that will be coming forward. Sure, so. that's no problem. Um, in fact, we are hoping that um, this roadway could become a nationwide example because from what we found out there aren't any other cities who have designed it this way and have lowered the speed limit for bikes um so yes i'll get with wendy and, okay. and we'll come out here with the press release or yeah we could do a work session but that's really not what we need we need uh, to get out to the public yeah whether it's i mean I mean, we have a studio downstairs that we need to use a little bit more. So I think we need to put something out so, so folks better know through multiple formats. So sure. thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, yeah. question on the uh, actual ordinance. It says um, a new subsection 55 of section 541 increasing speed limits in certain areas, 9th Street as follows. Ninth Street. That's the wrong one. That's what it says. It should be parking. It says Ninth Street right there. Look on the look on the ordinance that you're gonna pass or sign or whatever it is. I'm just pointing that out to you. You might wanna <laughs> clear up that for the other thing I had is um Sam, do you have a quick copy of it? Because <laughs> we upload what we get. Miss well, that explains it. I, I mean, I just brought it up, and mine is Park Avenue, or so mine, mine too. as well. It just well, goes out of I don't see nine on mine. Right there. Increasing. Oh, I see in the oh, yeah. in typed. Time. It's just typed as ninth, <coughs> and then down below it has Park Avenue from Wellington Typo. Street oh. to South Street and South Street to Walnut Street. So there's that one word in there. So who, who read this original? Who read this? I did. You did? Yes. <coughs> we need to notate the mistake. Uh, Let me get this pulled up quick. Yeah, I skipped right over. Okay, then, before, I have a couple of questions. Don't you just take out 9th Street? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because I know in, in here, in the original amendment is good the one that was made the motion for right yes right. So yes mr mayor it needs to be changed in the actual ordinance as it's written it has ninth street mm -hmm. at the top yep. and that just needs to be as councilman lynn said just take that out i don't have that in mind i don't have ninth in mind so. uh, I think I'm it, it reads, uh, right Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, uh, being ordained by the City Council of City Water of Iowa, that subsection 55, and then the rest of that first line, second line, and then at the end of the second line, it says increasing speed limits in certain areas, as Councilman Lenz said, 9th Street. And uh, 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 that 9th that Street does not need even to be there in certain areas as follows. Because it just, and then it describes where those areas yeah. are. Somehow or another, so I got to take one of these guys. It's, 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 I don't have it here either. Yeah, yeah it's right here on mine. Yeah, so the motion that was voted on is the correct motion. And what has been uploaded needs to reflect that, so. Ron say 9th Street? No. no. I don't have it. Yes, the mine says it right down there. Yeah. You gotta pull it off. Hmm. It's, not, it's, not, it's, not in the, it's not in what we voted on. It's so on the agenda, it's great. It's so in the version of the ordinance. Good catch. Of course. So notated, notated mm -hmm. by, uh, acknowledged by uh, Mr. Land, notated by. Uh, the reader of the motion, so that correct? Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm and it's only, it's only the, uh, oh, the on your oh, oh, I don't have it. Don't have it. Sandy does. It's on Sandy. You want to go to Sandy? All right, so we got it. 
<laughs> okay. Did more no, I, I, I did. Uh, I did. I did. No, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. the other question yeah. is, um, when we when we were sold in this concept, the protected bike lines protected people from the cars. I thought that I thought that was a big deal. So what difference does the speed limit make? Because they're protected bike lanes. And then second, I know the DOT they would make the argument: don't lower the speed limit too much because you'll have non-compliance. Mm -hmm. As your traffic engineer, does he agree with going from yes. 30 to 20? Yes. No, we all obey that. Because usually, in, um, this has been through studies that people drive five miles over the speed limit. So that's a study that's been done nationwide. So we know people will probably be going to drive I would but never yes, do that. For, for the safety of the bikers. So lowering it to lowering it to twenty, the thought is from research that folks will end up going twenty five. Twenty five. Miss Mayor, I was going to just ask. So are we moving? I mean, I know they're painting it. So should we be moving this change along, or is it not of a timely issue? Or what? What are your thoughts? We are hoping to have this done weather pending within two and a half to three weeks. Okay. Mr. Lane, did you? That's it. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, on this uh, first time. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. All right. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Team player, yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. You got me on that one. Mr. Mayor? It's a huge change. change. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Correct. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. That item carries and the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.